<laughs> Welcome back to the Bobcast. Today I got Philadelphia comedian and detective. Please welcome Lauren Sarnell. What's good, my guy? Uh, hey, what's yeah. up? What's All my good, fish bro? are just supporting you. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I'll take I'll take any support yeah. I can get. Man. I got a fish, a plant, and a Roomba. Those That's are our it. fans in here. <laughs> nice, nicely done. Nice yeah, done. man. Well, thank you for coming. It's bright and early, 10 a.m. Yes. That's how I know. Yes. You're a thank grown you. Man. Thank you for having me and for waking up. Oh yeah. So that we can get, so we can get busy oh, and no, get done. No yeah, problem. that's what's up. I woke up. I hit the gym because you're a big body. I want to be like, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna be big body today. I used to be way bigger than this. I believe you. I was going through your Facebook on the treadmill. I was like, man, yeah. this dude was huge. Yeah, yeah, I used to. I used to be way bigger than this, and then uh, I got diabetes, and it took half of it away. From oh me. no way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, so yeah. you can't be eating too much sugar and shit. Yeah, right? you know, you know, you, you make your choices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you definitely make your choices. Well, that hurts me because if I ever got diabetes, like, like you know, as a Dairy Queen boy, I'm like, ah oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, it was my first experience with legitimate like depression mm -hmm. was getting diagnosed mostly because I used to tease the shit out of my partner. Uh -huh. My partner I used to work with was, was he was, a, he was a diabetic at the time we started working together right. and I would tease him all the time. I would like be in a car eating, riding around doing patrol and I'm eating mm -hmm. peanut M&Ms and <laughs> tasty cakes and stuff. Donuts. And, you know what I mean? And he can, he's like halfway going blind from shock. <laughs> <and> shit, <right? laughs> so, so one day I get in the car and we're riding around mm -hmm. and I'm like stopping to go to the bathroom like right. every 20 minutes. And one, well, I finally got back in the car one time. He's like, so you're not going to say nothing. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? He's, you're not going to tell me. I was like, all right, yeah, I got diagnosed yesterday. <laughs> so, Is that a thing? Like you have to pee a lot? Absolutely. Your your body builds up the uh, you know, you build up the sugar and that's the fastest way to get it out. It no. comes out in the urine. Shit. So you're peeing like every twenty minutes. When your sugar is like five hundred, oh yeah. my yes. god! Yes, so if, you, if you're peeing a lot, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, go get your blood sugar checked. Absolutely, yeah. Which this is like really a, a bad morning now for me because yesterday I was at Dairy Queen and I must like from eleven to six I must have peed like nine ten times. <laughs> I <think> they, <laughs> well, I don't know. Would if if you were drinking at the same time, it might not be yeah, much I was of a concern. A lot of water, but yeah. like you know, like even like my dad was like, you know, you're you're peeing a lot today. And I yeah, was like, I am peeing a yeah, lot. Yeah, it may it may be it may be it, what you you twenty you almost twenty nine twenty eight twenty eight. Yeah. 28? Yeah. 28? I think I was maybe thirty five mm. when it finally came at me. Yeah. Oh man, but yeah. I've been like going hard at it since like two thousand seven. That's when we got it. Yeah. So I mean, nonstop. Just you know, like when I eat a Sunday, it's like two percent ice cream and. Mm. Like ninety eight percent fudge candy. <laughs> all so the right way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, I get you. I get you. I the got you. Hundred percent. Customer will never yeah. get what I yeah. get. Yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 the fringe benefits. Yeah. Every job's got its fringe oh, benefits. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just ripping like syrup straight from the bottle. <laughs> That's nice. It's, uh, I don't know how to uh, safe safe. Uh, what is it? Safety safety clean. Safe yeah, clean? yeah. Like the cleanliness. Safe serve. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that safe serve approved, <laughs> but. I approve yeah, of it. Yeah. 100%. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. There's uh, like six feet of distance. You that's, know? That's, 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 the, uh, that's the COVID uh, yeah, social yeah. distancing between you and the syrup yeah, exactly. bottle. Absolutely. Yeah. Those yeah. high pores are impressive. <laughs> <you know? laughs> that's, it. that's it. Yeah. If you yeah. ever go there, like go get um, either cocoa fudge, which is like crack cocaine. And then the new nice. crack cocaine is like the graham cracker fudge. Nice. Yeah. And then now they just came out with like a liquid uh, chocolate chip cookie fudge. And you put that all, all sounds like it's worth my foot. Yeah, it's it really absolutely <laughs> worth. It's worth. It's absolutely worth losing a foot over. Yeah, yeah. Man, yeah I, I'm with it. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Mm -hmm. And then, like, oh, like since you have diabetes, like, uh, do you have to use like diet chaser, like in into times you do drink? Uh, a diet chaser? Yeah, like uh, you're like do like a rum and coke. You'd use like a. Diet oh coke. no, I I typically. I've actually gotten to the point where I rarely drink a mixed drink at all. Mm. I'm, I'm a I'm a whiskey guy. Okay. Um, you know, scotch, bourbon, but I'm usually like ice on the rocks. Yeah, may, maybe ice. You know what I yeah. mean? But I, I I almost never drink. Only time I drink a mixed drink is if I'm having like a margarita, mm -hmm. and that's because I'm having tacos oh, and yeah. tacos without margaritas is almost kind of like. It, 
Like, what are you doing? Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like, uh, it, it's yeah. just like uh, adds to the flavor palette. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You want the full experience. How you about know what pina I'm coladas? You fuck with pina coladas? Very rarely. <laughs> Very rarely. I, I rarely have a mixed drink anymore, especially since I found out I had diabetes. Yeah. But it, I, I just been kind of like a, I'm. I'm a whiskey guy. I feel that. Yeah. yeah, that's why we're drinking whiskeys and black coffee it, right now. Precisely. <laughs> and, uh, cheers. Cheers to the Bobcast. Yeah. My man, this is delicious. No Splenda. No Splenda. No, no. <laughs> you know, I was telling you, like, I eat so much sugar on a daily basis, I can't start my morning, like, with a sugar, you know? Right, right. I used to have, like, a coffee snack, like, you know, like... 10% coffee, all mm. this creamer, mm -hmm. 80 pounds of sugar. Yeah. But then at some point, I was like, dude, you're just getting like sugar high. <laughs> <That's, Yeah. laughs> my kid, man, you sound like Mike. I'll tell you, I, I don't want to make myself sound any older, but you sound like my kids right now. <laughs> like, my wife baked a cake last night, yeah. and my kids went into the kitchen. Uh huh. And they came back out seven seconds later, mm -hmm. high as fuck. Yeah. I never seen. It was like you didn't even have time to eat to chew the cake. They yeah. came back. They were like cake drunk in a matter <laughs> of like four minutes. It was absurd. But let me ask you a question: Are you a breakfast guy? Uh, so I used to be like you know like oh I would have uh, pancakes with my syrup type of dude right, right, right. but now it's just like uh, oatmeal and uh, banana and okay. black coffee at breakfast okay I All just right. need to be able to shit in the morning and right. move on with and, my and go on yeah I get that yeah I get it's very it was like you, you, you said you're very you're food. very efficient and I, I see I see the theme here yeah, yeah. well yeah. I've only gotten this efficient a little bit like later like in the last couple years mm. you know before then I was just like lollygaggling through life yeah. <laughs> Way back in the day, <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you were young, yeah. yeah, I get that. I feel like I've grown like like fifteen years in the last three years. That man. that uh, twenty twenty seven to thirty, yeah, twenty seven to thirty is almost like twenty to forty. Yeah, it's a it is it's a big deal. And like yeah. just like mentally, and then like you know, even when you come comes to drinking, like the hangovers are like mm -hmm. four days. A lot of changes. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of changes from twenty seven to thirty. It's a big deal. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Is that like one of the reasons you stopped the whole chaser business? And you're like, when you were younger, did you have no, friends? no, not so? It was it was more about the uh, the sugar intake, yeah, keeping my sugar straight. You know, the, like uh, like most straight liquors, they have no like glycemic impact. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no my my blood sugar not going to spike from having a glass of whiskey. Yeah. Whereas like a pina colada, oh. which is <laughs> you know what I mean, it's basically a dessert with a drink in it. Know. You know what I mean? So. If I have a pina colada, then it, then I gotta worry about you know my my blood sugar spiking and 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 I actually get more I get more of a hangover from drinking sugary stuff. Oh, I think that's like actually proven, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Like and wine yeah. too, like sweet wines right. will fuck you up, right? And yeah. all that sugar is it, that that causes me more problems on the back end than, uh -huh. than just having some whiskey throughout yeah. the course of a night. No, yeah. I, I'm like I'm getting there, like uh, because Dwayne the Rock Johnson released uh, Terra Mana. Yeah, you know I've like for the last three years been just strictly tequila guy. <laughs> that's oh man. Now tequila is one of the one liquors. Like if I drink it straight, I'll end up with a hangover too. Yeah. Um, I haven't had Terra Mana. To me, my liver is a wastebasket, so yeah. it's just like you know, like I'm just drinking it because I support Dwayne. Well, th that, that's this there's a there's there's honor in that. I yeah, get that. like yeah. you know, we got like 1800 here because yeah. I had like a tequila guy on the other day, and he was like, <laughs> I need Terramana, but the Terramana was all sold out. Right. So I was like, let me just, I think like you know, before uh, Terramana, it was just a Jose, you know, mm -hmm. me and Jose, my Mexican friend, mm -hmm. you know, we get a little litty. Me amigo, <laughs> yeah, me amigo, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and it, Casamigos is so hard to find here. Yeah, for some. Reason. Is that the one with like those are the Migos? Is or is like Casamigo just uh like it's a, a uh, Casamigos? I know is, it's a tequila, but is it right. by anyone or is it? Just I, don't, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's associated with anybody famous. Yeah. It's just the it's just the drug of choice yeah, okay. for, drugs. <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of for a lot of the millennials and so yeah. forth right now. It uh, I've had nothing but bad experiences with yeah. it. It's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's fantastic. I have nothing but horror stories about drinking it. So it's I love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, tequila tequila will beat me up the next day like whiskey won't. I've yeah. always said tequila is like a, a fight or a fuck. Like uh alcohol that's fair you know and yeah. then like whiskey for me is just like you know the whiskey dick you know if you get too far because you're chilling you know like you're <laughs> right chilling right too much. we're not you're not really you're not drinking whiskey and trying to tear the world apart yeah you know exactly I mean? yeah. Yeah. and like sometimes i like for a long time like for the first three years i was drinking tequila it was always tequila and red bull 
Oh. And someone said that's Damn. called like a dirty Mexican. And Is that what that? I, that's what I've heard, you know, and I've always went with it. I'm like, you know, like. I've never heard of that yeah. before. I've never heard of tequila and Red Bull before. That's, that's, I, I don't believe in, in like combating my, my fluids that way. <laughs> like, I don't understand why I'm sending a fight into my stomach. Oh. It's like one of them is trying to bring me down. The other one's trying to bring me up. They have no business being together. Yeah, I know. You know, what you know that's what I like. The chaos inside is like yes. yin and yang. <laughs> I get that. I get that. While you're trying to like stay down, you also want to come up. And then once you hit the right level, your heart starts beating. You're like, maybe I shouldn't have had eight <laughs> Red Bulls tonight. <laughs> it's like tequila, Red Bull, and an AED. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and God forbid if you include any amphetamines in that. Day, oh, my like, God. Holy yes, shit. God forbid. <laughs> oh, man. That is fun. But those days I can't do it anymore. You know, like. If I'm going to have one of those days, I'm like, let me schedule out the next eight days to just be right like, to recover uh, yeah, three, three or four days to recover. I'll apologize. To my yeah. butthole a day, everything. a day to find your phone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Imagine losing all these phones. It's too. <laughs> it's like, dude, you have like six million dollars worth of. <laughs> Sometimes I get nervous. Like uh, people might hear down the hall, I'm having all this fun, and like just one day there might be a break, and and all my tech is gonna be gone. Yeah, you know, I only have two air tags in this whole apartment. And I have too much more shit than right. two. Right, they're dead to be trying to find. Yeah, and those air tags are just sitting in my closet. They're not even attached. <laughs> they're, they're a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of good those are doing. Yeah, got to put them on the gorilla tape. That's the most important thing in here. This uh, is the gorilla. It holds everything together. Absolutely. Oh my god. Absolutely. I remember when they first came out with Gorilla Tape, I was like, damn, fuck duct tape. You know, because yeah. that was like it's an engineer's like go to duct tape. Yeah. But now, you know, Gorilla Tape's here and it's black and sleek. It's kind of sexy. It's almost racist. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's so, almost so, racist. It's almost racist. Uh, but, strong know, black tape. But, you know, Gorilla's <laughs> a strong black animal. So, so a piece of rip Harambe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. dude. You know what peace I mean? out Harambe, man. <laughs> Like, I, I'm glad you bring that up because I have a Christmas sweater with Harambe on it. Like, Do you R- really? Yeah, like R.I.P. Harambe. <laughs> Fa la 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 Harambe. Yeah, and it's like, you know, that that Harambe, he just was doing the right thing. You That's know? all. He, he literally grabbed the baby and he was like, hey, buddy, get out of the pool. That's all. What should have been put down was the white over like weight lady. Well, <laughs> well the privilege the privilege involved here is is always going to skew. In one direction more than the other. The white lady. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, like big black gorilla, white lady. Yeah. And Kinda. sure, he didn't know his strength because he hasn't lifted anything small in such a long time, you know? He's a gorilla. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? How many things had to go wrong for that baby to end up in that gorilla's possession? We end up killing the gorilla. The gorilla pays the price. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we couldn't just move the gorilla to another zoo. Maybe put him back in the wild. Like, put him in a, like a gorilla <laughs> protection program or something. Witness <laughs> gorilla <laughs> witness <laughs> protection. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah you can, re, you can Imagine relocate. Imagine if we gorilla. had like witness protection programs for all the animals like in captivity that Don't went a little we? wild. Isn't that what that is? Isn't that what a zoo is, basically? No, the zoo is like them taking them out of the wild and putting them in prison. But like, you know, like sometimes you have lions that go off the rail. Like in SeaWorld, you have orcas that go off the rail. You know what I mean? Dude, orcas are maniacs yeah well they're my actually like my they like i wanted to be a marine biologist in my youth but my parents were like uh what kind of money are you going to make? <laughs> like, no, what, do you, like, what do you mean you want to play with fish? <laughs> like, because I'm a big animal lover. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, bro. I have to back your parents on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, no, they were right. I, they, they were right. Old man alert. Old man ran alert. I back your parents 100% on that decision. You're not just going to be playing with fish for a living. We're not, yeah. not going to. We can't tell our friends that <laughs> shit. No. no, they were right. Like, they can't go back to their, like, their family in India and be like, we let our son go into fish life, you know? He's a, he's a fishmonger. Yeah. No, no, dad, no, no, no. That, that was a good call. No, that was they, a good call. But orcas right. are, man, I saw a fa- saw a video on Facebook mm-hmm. the, yeah, just yesterday. Yeah. There was like a, there was an orca that was like beached. And the people were out there like spraying it with a hose. Mm-hmm. I guess they were trying to keep it wet in the meantime until they could get. I was like, fuck that orca, bro. <laughs> Those things are, they are maniacs. They are dicks. Yeah. They oh, they are. The, oh, my God. They are such assholes. <laughs> and it's just like, yo, stop spraying that whale. Fuck that whale, bro. That yeah. whale probably got on that beach chasing some poor seal yeah. who's just minding his seal business. And now here he is 
regretting yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that dude. They do those like those hydro planning things where they just build up enough speed so they can oh, just man. plan across the sand. They are so wild. <laughs> they're so wild. The stuff you see them doing, they're like out there grabbing seals and tossing them back. And they're like yeah, playing catch with, them with seal. their tongue. Just, uh, they're, they're, <laughs> not, not their tongue. They're off uh, their I tail. Was, I was yelling at my phone. <laughs> Fuck that orca. Stop spraying that yeah. orca. It was like, it was terrible. Have you ever seen the documentary Blackfish? I had seen parts of it. I've never seen the whole thing. Yeah, so it's it's crazy. Like uh, some like crazy dude. Like he wanted to become one with the orca. He was like a drug head. So <laughs> yeah, he I stayed bet. in like late and into the whatever, like the the sea world. Mm-hmm. And then he like jam- jumped in the tank with like his name was Tilikum. Tilikum was like the the big uh, the big male that mm-hmm. they had, and they basically used them to like breed all mm-hmm. the other whales. Uh, he actually had like uh, we looked it up. I was like um. Eight or nine baby mamas. Oh wow! You know, so he had a lot of kids. Typical, typical <laughs> big black whale. Yeah. It's unfortunate. It's like, and, uh, they call them stereotypes for a reason. I mean, yeah. look, man, he it was like eight, nine baby mamas and yeah. like fifteen kids, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they all had aggression because daddy was aggressive. Clearly, aggressive, yeah. yeah. And like this kid, like jumps in the tank late at night, and uh, Telecom was not happy about it. So mm. like he stripped him butt naked and wow. he bit off his dick. You know, now imagine like to an orca, like the little controlled baby nibble that has to be, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> the sheer accuracy yeah, of it all. Like, he's like, just like, uh. <laughs> uh, like doing little something like that. It brings it brings new meaning to that old tale that the old saying is like trying try to feed a whale a tic tac. Yeah, it's right. like well, it's it's a thing. He can't. It's do actually it. a thing. Yeah, he they can do it. They have so much control. And unbelievable. Then, like, the There's... next morning, he came in and draped the dude on his back. So like all of the trainers could see like oh that, I killed this, this is motherfucker. what I did yeah. <laughs> they're such dicks dude yeah. I don't I don't know that there's an animal in the wild in the king other than like the the average house cat mm-hmm. oh yeah like <laughs> like there's like there's like the orca mm-hmm. and there's because I I had a, actually ironically I had a cat the cat was black uh-huh. it was black with like a white chest. it was like an orca yeah, in yeah. my house it was a, my cat <laughs> a cat named coconut perfect name mm-hmm. this cat was an absolute maniac yeah. Tried to murder my family on multiple occasions. I had this cat would like, and I got the cat from another cop. Mm. This cop was on Craigslist giving away some kittens. We got the cat from the kit from the, from that. Cop. Oh, so you actually got the kitten kitten, right? Okay. okay. So brought up, brought the cat home. I'm raising this cat and feeding it and loving it. <laughs> and the whole time, it's like trying to figure out how to murder my family. <laughs> like, and it was it was really creative. It got to the point where she would leave like stuffed animals on the steps. Yeah. Not like the first step. Or the top step, mm-hmm. but like the fifth step. Yeah. So you're already you, in motion. You're already in it. <laughs> you're already in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, stuffed animals, blankets. She would drag blankets out to the steps and stuff. Just, yeah. just like I'm like, let's let's see who falls down the steps today. <laughs> There's a cat. No. No, I, I had to get rid of her. I had to get rid of her. I took her to the SPCA. I would have just let her go in the park. Yeah. Just let her ass go. I was afraid she would thrive and come back. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? what's I that Disney wanna, movie? I think it's called Cats, right? Dude, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to like run into her in the street like one day. Like, yeah. oh, remember me? Like, <laughs> you let me out, motherfucker. So, yeah, this I, is my cat. I surrendered that cat, bro. She was trying to kill my family. I, I couldn't. I couldn't deal with it. I had a friend that like moved to like Maniac, and when the day we were like moving him in, like there was like eighteen cats in his backyard. They're like, hey. Hey, what are you what are you doing here? You know, this is our backyard. Like, dude, they're the worst animals ever, bro. Cats are horrible. They're horrible. But I think that I think those are the two. I think mm-hmm. that's it. I think there's orcas and there's cats. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, they say orcas are very uh, close to humans uh, because they have like very close knit like family structures mm-hmm. and like, they know like who's like the queen bee in mm-hmm. the pack and all that shit. Mm-hmm. And just like humans, like that's what we fuck with, and we're scary people. And like, not you know, that far, not that far off. Yeah, not that far. The off. The only thing yeah. we have that they don't have are thumbs. Right. Right. And if they had thumbs, right. we would be fucked. Imagine the dicks they could pinch off if they had. <laughs> <if they, laughs> no, I think he enjoyed it. <laughs> imagine, imagine if Tilikum Tenico, Tenico had a fucking thumb, dude. He probably would have. Probably would have got the guy's balls too. Yeah, you know dude. I mean, I mean like, think about this. Like every time, like someone is like running away from, them, they have to like, like bite them, right? So like if they had a thumb. They could just be like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, no, no, nah, where you going? Where you going? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ever see like Avengers? I know, like, you're kind of a fan of Marvel, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so like, there's that one where like, uh, the Hulk is uh, smashing Thor's little brother back and forth, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's, how yeah, I that's imagine a, it will be. That's precisely what it would be, yeah, terrible, terrible animals, bro. 
I anti, get, we are anti Orca on this side. I mean, I love so, Orcas. <laughs> I am anti Orca, bro. I was so mad watching them spray that Orca, that beach Orca. Fuck that whale, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, orcas are actually apex predators because they say like great white sharks are, but like nah, like nah. Th- like three orcas versus a great like you'll it's never find an orca by itself, right? But a great white shark, he's like, yeah, I'm the shit. Yeah, no, you ain't dog. Yeah, until yeah. until <laughs> yeah, until. <laughs> there was like a documentary that came out like who ate this great white shark, hmm. and they went on and on for like three hours. The, the answer is obvious. It's orca dog. <laughs> yeah, we know we know who it was. They try to like try right. to like go down the road of like a giant squid. I was yeah, like, no dog. No, you're not fooling anybody, bro. There's no, there's no cracking out here. It's, it's Shamu, bro. Yeah, yeah. dude, Shamu, yeah. and like, you know what's even crazy about that? Like, one of Shamu's like sisters was named Namu, and my sister's name is like Namu. It's like spelled the same. That's funny. So like the whole time we're like, you're an orca. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mature. That's so awesome. That's great. That's what sisters are for. Yeah, well, she she got a really great animal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> she did. That's awesome. Yeah, like uh, my cousin would say, like, since my name is like Bavik, uh, it would be like Baha, I'd be like a sheep. <laughs> you know, she either got an orca or like a cow because it's Namu. That's you know? funny. But I always got a sheep, and I was like, that ain't cool. <laughs> That's funny. I'd never pronounce Indian names right the first time. Yeah, you can't. I mean, nah. at this point, I don't like, unless they're Indian kids that are born now that have like um, too much entitlement. Like, I gave up on the name a yeah. long time ago. Like, once I, like, since I work in manufacturing, mm-hmm. like, I can't expect like blue collar workers to get this name right. Right. You know? I, <laughs> I've just truncated it down to Bob, which is like right. close to Bob or B. Just give me the letter. Yeah. You know, if we can do the letter, yeah. we can all work. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, find some common ground. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't accept anything outside of like Bavik, Bob, or B. Because I had this lady at my last job. She's like, Can I call you Billy? And for wow. a minute, I thought about it. I was like, Why? Why Billy? She was like, My son's name is Billy. Then for a second, I was like, Do you have a. At least a colored husband, right? <laughs> uh, like, is the kid have a hint of brown? And she was like, no, I just like the name. I just like the name. That's very privileged of her. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> I did tell her, like, since name. I was an industrial engineer, like, my job is just to make your life easier. Mm. So I was like, sure, Billy, it is. You know? <laughs> I fought Larry my whole life. Yeah, I mean. And people have been trying to call me Larry since I was, like, I was, like, in elementary school. My teachers would call me Larry, and I'm yeah. just like, why would you call a seven year old kid Larry? Yeah. Like that's the that's the most adult shit I've ever heard in my life. My father's name was Lawrence. Uh-huh. I never heard anybody call him Larry. Yeah. So I fought it. I fought it for years until like just like recently I stopped like hearing it when people say Yeah. It. You know what I mean? Like people call me Larry at work now and it's just kinda like, look, just just give me the fucking paperwork. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever, dude, I don't, like I don't really care. Dude. Just give me the fucking paperwork. All right? Whatever. Yeah, but, it's just, you're wasting too much time. Like, it, yeah, I don't have the energy. Yeah, the, for, yeah, the energy, uh, the time. It's uh, like, but like Larry, like I like Lawrence way better than Larry. I hated Lawrence too growing up. Yeah, I guess because uh, it's like a really mature name. It was, maybe. A, and it was, it wasn't until I had a, I had a girlfriend, mm-hmm. and she had an older sister. Mm. Her girlfriend, her name was Nicole, and her sister's name was Liz. And Liz was like the most beautiful woman I'd ever yeah. seen in my life. And I was over the house one day, we were hanging out, and Liz actually said to me, because I used to make people call me Arnell. Okay. I used to like my middle name much more than my first name. And one day Liz actually said to me, she said, uh, she's like, I love your first name. She said, it's so sophisticated. Mm, yeah. And I have been Lawrence ever since. Yeah. <laughs> like, I like calling Never you looked Lawrence. back. Yeah. yeah. I feel yeah. like more grown up calling you Lawrence. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad that I can add to your maturity, Thank your level you. of maturity. It's yeah. like when a, a James goes by Jamie, you know? I'm like, Jamie. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a grow up, bro. Yeah, well, I always, uh, like, I have a, like a, one of my good friends from, like, childhood. His name is, like, James, and he would always go by Jamie, but I always, like, I liked calling him James. I'm yeah. like, dude, like, that's a cool name that it everyone is, yeah. got, you know? Like, yeah. It's not like Bavik where now I got to haggle. You know, like, what do you want to call me? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> let's, make it, let's make a deal with yeah. my name, right? Yeah. That's how I always felt, you know? Like, what are we doing here? You know, why That's do I have funny. to negotiate this right. with you? <laughs> Billy. Yeah. Can I, can I call you Brian? <laughs> <laughs> well, in college for a period of time, my last semester in college, my senior year, I went by uh, John. Because <laughs> everyone has fucked at John. And I'm not going to lie, dude. It worked. You know? That's awesome. Because you'd be like at a party and like the music be bumping. And, be like, and if you're like trying to say like Bavik, they're like, what? And you're like, Bavik, what? And then they get tired. Yeah, they like, can't John's even. Yeah, like, you can't you can pick that up. And they, they got it. They got it. 
you could yawn. Yeah. And actually didn't manage to communicate that. Yeah. yeah. She's like, you want to go upstairs and fuck John? I'm like, <laughs> yes. yeah, finally. This is how quick it is. John's got it. <laughs> and like That's everyone's awesome. fucked the John females, dudes. I feel like it was a very f- gender fluid name. That you know? is funny. See, I think I think this is what I missed out on by not going right to college, mm-hmm. like right after high school. I'm in college now mm-hmm. and like almost purely because it's free for me right now. Yeah. But other than that, I wouldn't. <laughs> like I fought it. I fought it until I figured out how to do it for free. Right. But I think I missed that. I missed that. Like I went to I went to culinary school. Yeah, I mean that's like its own fun too. It's a it's a it's a whole Can you cook now? I I mean I can. I'm allowed to. <laughs> you know I, mean? I love that. You know what I mean? But but like the, it was a, it was a it was a it was a it was a very similar like I feel like I got a similar experience mm-hmm. to what most kids got going to college and yeah. whatnot. I lived in this apartment building with a bunch of students and right. everybody was fucking everybody. It was weird yeah. and fun and all of that. But I still I feel like I missed I missed that college party. Oh my god. Too I'm John. Let's yeah. go fuck now. <laughs> like I feel like I missed that. Like yeah. more regularly. I feel like it, I feel like I got a taste of it, but I would have gotten more of it if I had actually gone to college when I was younger. Yeah, I'm kind of like a glad actually. Like you know, like I went to college because our parents either want like a doctor, engineer, or whatever. Right. Right. It was right. mandatory right. for me, right. and uh, I just like I didn't even like like know what college was. It was like when I applied, it was either like Temple, Penn State, or Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. uh, because. We live in Pennsylvania. My dad was like, you're going to a state school. It's a little mm-hmm. bit cheaper. I was like, yeah, what's good? That's all right. Uh, Pittsburgh, I got into a satellite campus because I spelled like uh, Pittsburgh wrong on my cover letter. <laughs> Who knew it had an H in it? Like, not me. I didn't know it was Pittsburgh. <laughs> and at the end of all places, <laughs> it's like, it's, you know what it is? Because everybody in Pittsburgh is just like, oh. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> that's, where, that's where it comes from. Yeah. And I swear. I, I went to culinary school in Pittsburgh. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, oh. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I would have went either because it's like too far. And mm-hmm. then I got into Penn State, which was right in the middle. And Temple was just too close to home. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of glad I didn't go to Temple because I can't imagine like you doing college things and then there's like grown people right around you. Right. You know? like, <laughs> right. It's not. It's not collegey enough. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was. Uh, it was like weird. Like I like I was in a frat and it was like a white boy frat, mm. which uh, you know. They just swindled me, and I, 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 I didn't know anything. They were just like, you want pussy? You want a drink? And I was right. like, oh, all, all right. You want a token? Yeah. Uh, no, I wasn't a token. Like, <laughs> oh, uh, no, okay. There was actually cool. two Patels in my pledge class, oh, like nice. me and the other guy. So at first, we kind of You guys were like, overrepresented. Yeah. Like, I was like, you guys needed Indians that bad? You took two of the – you didn't even switch your last names. <laughs> trying, to raise their, <laughs> trying to raise their GPA. They they were, but, you know, we weren't the – like, if. Honestly, if you yeah. had two Indian guys join a frat, we weren't the smartest. They could have done speaker. better. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he barely became a dentist, and I barely became an engineer. That's awesome. You know? <laughs> we are at the bottom of the barrel of those. Nice, but you know we got good work ethic. Mm-hmm. And that's what matters. That, you know, that is what if matters. You're too smart, you don't got work ethic. There's there's no way to go but down. Yeah, from there, you know what I mean. Yeah, we have yeah. up, but yeah. like. I was like, the, the worst part is like, I was watching white boys haze white kids right in front of the 7 Eleven downstairs. <laughs> and like, at Penn State, like, mm-hmm. hazing is like, you do it, but like, don't, don't get caught. Cause right. you know, every, and I was like, these kids are doing it in front of 7 yeah. Eleven. They're going <laughs> in, the getting a snack, and then, are you done your push ups? <laughs> like, I was like, what <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Times have changed. Yeah. They're going to, there's a community college right here. They're mm-hmm. going across, making them do mm-hmm. wall sits. The one kid is like vomiting and he's like, get back on the wall, motherfucker. Why are they doing this right here? Is there a frat at the community college? I have now? no idea. <laughs> like, how far have we come? And I was like, are you guys not afraid of the police? And I'm like, then I'm getting, I'm like, oh, the police probably have like more severe things to worry about. Uh, and if I was any, like, this if is anything. why uh, uh, you guys can get away with it. Yeah. Because the police at Penn State, like, I've gotten like, um, but they weren't like violent or anything. Mm-hmm. It was just like me being a dummy at the wrong time. And I was but like, that's how like- you get those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like my uh, what do you call it? my uh, was just like throwing a plastic cups over a balcony mm-hmm. on the night I graduated. I got in my cap and gown, and I was like, "Yo, bros, you can't, you can't, yeah. you can't do nothing about this. Like, no. you need my last thousand yes. dollars before I leave yes, this place." Yes, precisely. So I was yes. like, "Damn!" But like those state college police, like. They're punks, you know? Like, nah. I was like, you got nothing better to do than... There's no violent crimes that happen there. There's nothing, nah. you know? No. Nah. And, and it's, it's tough in a situation like that because, you, I mean, you do have to justify your existence. And there is... Uh, 
there is a certain level of you know civility that's expect you're yeah. expected to maintain. Uh-huh. You know, what I mean, so you know, I, obviously the cop the cop probably wants to give you a break, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's kind of like he'll probably get in more trouble for giving you a break than he would for just writing you the ticket. You know oh, what I mean? Lawrence, you gotta imagine this was in like in the heart of Fratland. Like, huh? you no, know, like people are already making trouble here. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. And, he, and that dude was fucking sick of y'all. Yeah, <laughs> he, was, he was sick of y'all. He probably gave. 12 breaks before he got to you. Yeah. I yeah. can't imagine. Like, graduation night must be, like, one of the An nights. An absolute <laughs> horror show. Horror show. Yeah. Yes. I was just yeah. probably, like, one of 50 dudes that yes. got in trouble that Yes. Night. You were the straw that broke oh. that cop's back. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. I cannot. I couldn't imagine. I would rather be a cop in North Philly yeah. on New Year's Eve than a cop at Penn State on graduation day. Yeah, because at yeah. least you have, like, like you can justify everything, right. you know. Right. Like, There's real criminals out here. Yeah. I can get in. I can roll around on the ground with. Mm-hmm. Not some fucking frat boys. Yeah, I was wearing red pants. Who's excited to make and worse. happy <laughs> and happy and feeling good about it about the about his future? <laughs> Gives a shit about you and your bright future, Rob. <laughs> I think the red pants really drove him over the edge. That may have. Done- <laughs> <laughs> they have done it. That may have done it. That would have done it for me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and this was the first and last time I ever lied to a cop too. Cause I remember like he was like, All right, like I need your license. And I was like, Oh, I don't got it, brother. And <laughs> <laughs> like obviously I do. I just came from the bar. Right. And then he was like, All right, spell your name for me. So I thought, all right, let me be witty. I'm gonna say my name is Darmesh. And <laughs> I uh I couldn't spell Darmesh in the moment because nice. it's like D H and I was like spelling it D A R and he must have known a Darmesh, and he was like, "Nah, dog, <laughs> that's not how you that's spell- not it." And then I just pulled out my wallet. I was like, "Here's my license. Yep. Just give me what you got." Yep, <laughs> you know? yep, yep. Set yourself right on up. Set yourself right on up. <laughs> you know, I- now you might have got that one over on me. Yeah, but a cop on a college campus. Yeah, he knows a Darmesh. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> absolutely, ah. absolutely. I'm not running into a lot of Darmeshes <laughs> in East Division. No, you know what know. I mean? But. But you're gonna eat that guy knows that guy knows a Darmesh yeah. when he sees one. It's yeah. like his doctor might have been a Darmesh <laughs> or something. I was just already too fl- I was just so disappointed in myself <laughs> for getting it wrong that I was like That's fair. I was like, give me this. I I've earned it. That's fair. No, you gotta you gotta be ready. You gotta be yeah. a little bit more prepared than prepared than that. And uh, I had to do like my community service at like a firehouse, which you know at that They actually point, made you do community service? Oh yeah. Like uh but like I wasn't sad about it because mm. like, you know, firemen are pretty cool too. You yeah, know, they, they just got, had me uh they got I no know, K you guys gig. have a beef. <laughs> they got no K gig. It's all right. All right. Like, I just had to like wash the fire trucks every day. That's not which bad. is like I got like you know like every kid's dream. I was just like back there. Yeah. Like, hey, did they have a Dalmatian? <laughs> no, no, they, they didn't have a Dalmatian. No. Biggest fucking rip off ever. Yeah. They never have a Dalmatian. Yeah, they never have a Dalmatian. They're liars. Firefighters are liars. Yeah. Get a Dalmatian. Get a fucking college, Dalmatian. Please. All right, but they. I, I tell you what, I was uh, I was working one time. I was still in patrol at uh-huh. the time, and I had to go to the bathroom. Right. It's the other thing firehouses are good for. They usually have a bathroom. <laughs> so I pull over, I run into the firehouse. They let me in. I'm going to the bathroom. I walk past the. First of all, they have a fucking Coke machine mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. There's a Coke machine. And right next to the Coke machine is a stack of bags of charcoal. This is how much grilling these guys are doing <laughs> in the firehouse. <laughs> this is what they do with their time. You want to talk about defunding somebody? <laughs> This is what they're doing with their time. They have a stack of bags of charcoal as tall as me in their firehouse. They're all sitting in the other room. They're watching like some 70-inch screen TV. You know what I mean? They didn't offer me anything to drink. Fuck firefighters and orcas. The biggest biggest dicks in the game, bro. They go together. That's what this episode's going to be called. Fuck Fuck firefighters and orcas. orcas. Absolutely. Absolutely. Horrible, horrible people. If it was Lawrence's way, we could just gather all of them and just throw them in a hole. I'm like, I want to, now I'm wondering who that was spraying that orca on the beach with the hose. Was it a firefighter? It probably was. They didn't show who was spraying them. It was probably some dick firefighter. Like, oh, I got you, bro. They brought the whole fire truck out there. The whole truck's out there on the beach. Now, who's going to get that thing off the beach? Yeah. Amazing. Oh, that's really funny. So, um, did you grow up in Northeast Philly? No, no, I grew up around the corner. Oh, okay. So, like, yeah. um, like, uh, like, 
why did you get into being a policeman at first? Because twelve, you said twelve oh. years on the force, on the job years, now, yep, and right? Five years as a detective. Yep. So, like, why did you get into this? I became a cop because I get bored super fast. Mm-hmm. Um, I've I've done a lot of stuff. I've done. I've had a lot of jobs. Mm-hmm. I, I went to culinary school. I've been a bellhop. I've been a professional recording artist. Mm-hmm. I've been a FedEx man. And a beer man, I've had a ton of different jobs. Right. What I found was that uh, when I wanted to make a move out of like sheer boredom for right. what I do, I would have to start a whole new job, a whole new career, right. and start at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Become a police officer, I could do any one of 100 jobs and never have to fill out another job application interesting uh if i wanted to be a gym teacher i could put in a transfer and go work at the pal wow right? i didn't know that if i wanted to be a helicopter pilot i could put in a transfer and if i know a congressman maybe i go to the aviation unit right. and i'll be a helicopter pilot you know what i mean yeah. so i've been i've that's one that's the main reason why i wanted to become a cop uh-huh. was because i like the idea of when i want to do something different there's a place i can go mm. right here in my department there was that and then there was you know the whole watching cops do it wrong right i could go out there and do it right yeah that, and it was kind of a balance between those two yeah, and you get to wear cool sunglasses on. Camera. I get to wear the sunglasses, <laughs> and now I get now I get to get dressed up and throw on a tie and all yeah. that. And I've been a, I was in Highway Patrol, which was one of my main goals when mm-hmm. I when I got on the job, and you know I got to wear the big shiny stupid boots, and yeah. the hat, and be super intimidating. And when I, I so I got to do a lot of that stuff, but that was all because you know you put in a transfer and you you know you you do the work yeah. and you can go do another thing without having to start all over from the bottom that's really interesting you say that because i you know what i never really knew that like you know for my like always my understanding is like you you do a, uh, become a cop mm-hmm. and then you know you can be a detective or whatever like mm-hmm. um like law and order and all that right? right but yeah i never knew there was like so many other like to be a gym teacher like i didn't even know that pretty much i mean you're basically a gym teacher you go work at the pal you know what i mean when you say pal like what is that the, the police athletic league oh the, okay, like okay. The, the in the community centers and mm-hmm. stuff kids can come in and play ball and sure you know, and they run camps and stuff like that. And okay. basically, basically a gym teacher. You're a cop. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? I had a I had a conversation one time. I was on a hospital detail. Uh-huh. Uh, this was I was I was only in a job maybe two or three years at the time. And I was talking to this doctor. And he was asking me how I liked the job. Right. He happened to be Indian. Oh, hell right? yeah. Right? And uh, he was like, because, you know, it's like I thought about going, going into law enforcement. His parents dis- disapproved. Mm-hmm. He wanted to go work for the FBI. Yeah. He was like, but how do you like it? I said, you know, it's great. It's the greatest job ever. It's like it's the only job where I could be doing anything. Right. I could do your job mm-hmm. when I leave here. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, how do you figure? It's like, you're a surgeon. He said, yeah. I said, well, I get out in the street and I got a gunshot victim out here. You know what I mean? Who's tying off his tourniquet yeah. and putting pressure on his wound and whatnot? And like, I, that's me. Mm-hmm. I could, I'll do your, I may do your job one day. You'll never do mine. Right. You know what I mean? And he and he he was just like ah, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Like, yeah I mean, like, but you know it's 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 interesting because there's so it's so varied and so many different things mm-hmm. that you get to do. Yeah. No, that's like really cool. Like I never even thought about like you know like you are out there being a surgeon, yeah. and multidisciplined. So when you were a cop, like what like was like your favorite like almost like favorite thing to do? Like you know like. Yeah, catching criminals is cool. Yeah. But like it, was that like the favorite thing to do? It it was uh it was the way it is the way that I spent my time in patrol. Mm-hmm. It was uh my partners that the few partners that I worked with cuz I worked in several districts and a, in a special unit. Uh it is the way that my partners and I decided we were going to manage our careers. I was I was a crime fighter okay. when I was in the street. I chased bad guys. I went out into the communities and I tried to find Guys were breaking the law and get them out of the community. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked in, I mean, because I'm from Philly. Yeah. So I, it, there's almost a, it's almost hard not to work in places that you you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I worked in the neighborhoods that I grew up in and that I had family in. Right. So when I was in those neighborhoods, it wasn't just like I was in some random neighborhood. Yeah just looking to take people and, but this is where my family mm-hmm. lives so if you're out here doing things you got no business doing 
you know, my mother-in-law is here with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? My nieces and nephews and my cousins and my aunts and my uncles and my sister. And, like, they're all around here, too. Right. And, you know, so we don't all need to be together. <laughs> you know what no, I mean? I agree. But, yeah, that was that was pretty much what I did. My, me and my it was the It was the easiest way to stay out of trouble mm-hmm. and to keep the bosses off your back. Yeah. If I got an arrest... Can't nobody ask me to do nothing else right now. Exactly. I got a, I got an hour or so where my <laughs> boss ain't looking for me. Yeah. You know, so there there was a little bit of that. And then there was also just, you know, trying to, you know, make sure that the place is livable for the people who have to live there. Right. Yeah. So that's why I asked if you like grew up here, because like, I feel like if you're a cop in your own community, mm-hmm. you can kind of like recognize like not everyone is an enemy. Right. If like a, if a kid maybe makes a mistake, you mm-hmm. can actually like give him a warning because you might know mm-hmm. his parents or something. You know? There's this, there's, there's some of that. What I will say is that it is, it's probably even more so the case when you are from a place. Mm-hmm. What I, what I'll say is that I've worked with a lot of cops who are not from here mm-hmm. and, most you don't you don't work in the neighborhood that you live in right especially when you're in patrol okay right like i'm I'm a, I'm a detective now and i do work the neighborhood that i live in but as a patrol officer i couldn't live in the district where my house is mm. so you have to go to another neighborhood right so there's only the only familiarity that i have with the neighborhoods that i worked in is because like coming up as a kid right. these are the places that i hung out at right and where my family were right <clears throat> But what I will say about like ninety eight point seven three seven six four two percent of cops mm-hmm. is that they're all coming in from outside of the neighborhood that they work in. Right. There's something to be said for going into North Philly when you're from, you know, the suburbs, mm-hmm. when you're from the far northeast. There's something to be said for going into that neighborhood and policing it. Right. Because regardless of, you know, contra- contrary to con- uh, popular belief, cops are not just like hunting people to put them, you know, innocent Behind people. Into, yeah. th- that That's not the case. Mm-hmm. These people are in your neighborhood because your neighborhood needs policing. Right. The more cops you see in a neighborhood, it's because that neighborhood needs more policing. Yeah. And the people that are coming in, they're not from there. I tell people all the time. This ain't my neighborhood. Mm. I don't have to chase these gun toters and drug dealers around out here. This, I'm not chasing them past my house. I'm chasing them past yours. Right. You know what I mean? So that it the and most cops are more compassionate than people people mm. would imagine. It's just that the average person doesn't come into contact with the police until like it's the worst late. case scenario. Yeah. Right. You don't get pulled over until you do something for getting pulled over. Right. And if you, I mean, you know what I never hear anymore. That I used to hear all the time. I never hear anybody say, I've never even been pulled over before. Wow. I used to hear that a lot. Yeah. Ten years ago, I would hear that a lot. Growing up, you would hear people say that. I never even so much as gotten a ticket. You never hear that anymore. Because no. everybody's wilding the fuck out. Yeah. So everybody's being stopped by the police for something yeah. anymore. You know what I mean? So and it but it, it doesn't happen until something extraordinary mm-hmm. happens. Most people don't spend their days calling the police yeah so but th- that's why the, the the sense of compassion gets lost is because you don't often have this kind of opportunity with a police officer to actually hear you know why it is they're doing it yeah. why they're there and how they actually feel about being in your neighborhood mm-hmm. yeah. well i've always like so every place i've gotten in trouble mm-hmm. has been like not a very like a uh, dangerous place like penn state or right. uh I, like um like I got a disorderly conduct in uh, Belmar, New Jersey, like right outside of a bar. It was actually a public urination, and mm-hmm. then I ran because I was just the tequila had me feeling some type of way. And, <laughs> you get hot, man. Yeah. You got to get some wind on you. Yeah, Sorry, I'm not like running that. from you. I'm just trying to cool off. Yeah, it was like the night was full of so much drama. Like all the uh. all of our girls were upset, and I was just like, oh man, like. I- I'm out of here. <laughs> and I swear, this it was like a young dude. And I swear, like, the other cops made him just, like, were, like, it might have been, like, a hazing thing. Like, mm-hmm. oh, bro, like, go, people like to pee in this spot. Like, mm-hmm. just go hang out there. Yeah, like, you got the pee detail. Yeah, yeah, and, like, man, he came out. Like, I was still, I think I was still peeing. Like, that's yeah. what I felt like. Or else I wouldn't have ran because that I know, like, <laughs> the severe severity of, like, the cops <laughs> and getting shot. And, like, I was like, mm, like, like, when I was running, too, I was like, mm-hmm. The Grand Theft Auto came in my mind. I was like, oh, like, bro, like, we've been playing too much GTA. It's not that this easy. This is not how it works. You're lucky they didn't send an orca. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. Yeah. I just remember like looking to my right and there was like three bike cops, like just right here. Like, hey brother, you're gonna stop. That's funny. And I remember looking behind me and it was like three, like now these guys I definitely could outrank. They were a little chubby. Yeah. But like I had no idea where I was going. I was in like a new place yeah. and I was gassing out. <laughs> so then I just like stopped and I was like, I just like laid down. I was like, you guys got me. Like, no, that's let's, awesome. Let's go. <laughs> that's, all, that's awesome. And I remember the guy like come in and he's like handcuffing me like real aggressive. Like he, he broke my phone a little bit, but like, I was like, mm. whatever, you know, I caused a little bit mm -hmm. of, you know, I deserve this. Mm. And he was like, what, why are you running? Like what you got? He's like checking my socks. I was like, bro, like, um, <laughs> I was just running from the drama. And yeah. bro, he hated that. He yeah. was like, yeah. I was like, but that was it. Like I had nothing. Like, I you know I wasn't that's do, funny. Do anything it's, bad. It's, it's, it's so, it's so weird, man, because it's like, like that's going to happen. That's happened yeah. to you five times. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> but that's happening to that guy every night, night yeah. man. <laughs> every night. I went to work one night. I was, I was working in oh. North Philly and me and my partner had, we had like, we had fought a guy. Mm -hmm. We had kicked somebody's door in, and locked somebody up. Yeah, we had been to work for two hours. Wow! Like I, it, two hours. That's crazy. You know, what I, mean? I still got a whole like. Oh my god! Oh my god, bro! Can I have something to drink? You know, what I mean? you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So like that. That's what that's what the cops are up against. Even in even in nicer neighborhoods, uh -huh. people are people are. Tripping, bro. Dude. People are tripping today. There is no lull. Yeah. There used to be a time where you would come to work and it was raining and it was like, all right, it's going to be quiet tonight. That yeah. shit ain't true no more. On the more. rainy days, that's when we got to get work done. It's almost <laughs> like uh, you ride motorcycles. Yep. You know the old saying they say, when it rains, you don't want to be riding when, at the start of a rain because mm. that oil comes up out of oh, the ground. Yeah. It's, that's what it is. It rains and the people start to start, they come up out of the fucking <laughs> asphalt. All the assholes come up out of the asphalt when it starts raining, bro. Yeah. It's terrible, bro. It's terrible. Man, we got nobody's chilling. No one, like, yeah. I mean, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it. Well, me personally, yeah. I acted out so much because, uh, like, uh, alcohol is still illegal in Gujarat, where my parents are from. Okay. So, like, when they raised me my whole life, it's always just like, this is bad, but there's no understanding of what it is. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I went to college, it's just like, just putting it down, putting right. it down. And I don't, right. like... This isn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> what, are, what were you guys worried about? <laughs> and then you're in cuffs. You're like, ah, uh, damn. Oh, they didn't say this part. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's what they say. It's almost like the abstinence mm. education. Like, they just teach kids not to. Yeah. They don't tell you why not to. And then to. you're just uh, getting knocked up. And yeah. you're like, oh, shit, I didn't know my sperm yeah. was that powerful. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I had this in my nuts? Nobody, nobody <laughs> told me. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's like then you look at kids like uh, maybe like in Europe where they're like growing up with like wine at dinner, mm -hmm. and like they're not raging like this. right, right. You know? yeah, it's like only yeah. in America. Only in America. And I was yep. like, bro, like, when I have kids, I want them to know, like, hey guys, you can take eight shots of tequila, but stay indoors. <laughs> Don't <laughs> stay leave in, that take, fucking take them house at home. That's another thing is I rarely drink uh -huh. outside of home. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't drink and drive. Uh, I rarely drink outside mm. of home. If I do, it's because I know, like, I'm going to have two hours before I got to make a move. Some, you know somewhere. what I mean? Yeah, yeah I got But, you. yeah, I, I'm, I, I didn't drink. I didn't drink until I was, like, 19 or 20. I was away at school in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. before, I, before I ever got drank. I never, I never tried weed until, like, my 19th birthday. Yeah. Before, like, the idea of it was just never the idea of being, like, fucked up yeah. and being out and about never sat right with me it still doesn't sit right with mm -hmm. me today i trust people even less yeah. <laughs> than i did than i did when i was young like yeah. i know more i've had i've, I've been exposed to the worst yeah. humanity has to offer and the last thing i want to do is be out here with y'all all fucked up mm -hmm. it meant like i'm good without it yeah oh yeah like when i uh like in, when I lived in the frat, uh, I was, like, doing too much. But, like, you know, we're safe in the walls of, like, right. this home. Right, But then all my trouble started once I moved out. Like, yeah, yeah, year, once I you go outside, yeah. And then post, uh, <laughs> post that, I was like, bro, yeah. like... Don't leave. You yeah. know, once once the alcohol is flowing, just you know, stay put. Yeah. You know, maybe chain yourself to something. That's that's you're an engineer. Alcohol <laughs> plus distance equals <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, a little bit of math, man. It's just a little bit of math. But believe yeah. it or not, like all people like in the STEM field, science, tech, uh, mm. what is the E? 
engineering Engineer. stuff. And then <laughs> <laughs> medical. What is, the, what is the E? Tequila. Yeah. <laughs> They're like the most wildest people I feel. Yeah. Because, you know, you're like. You're all fucking repressed. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? And you get 124. Like the lowest grade I ever got on an exam was like a 6%. Like no you're going to die that night. You know? Like, no how do shit. You, how do you, like that's like getting. Part A of a 24 part question right. No you, know, you got step one right, but you got the rest wrong, homie. It's like, you you misspelled your name, bro. It's like D H. Like, what the fuck? The teacher bro? from overseas is like, yo, come on, bro. How did you get that That's wrong? That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Would so be- you went, but you went to Penn State? I did, yeah. Okay. All right. It was, I mean, it was a great time. Like, you know, I didn't even know about sports until I went there. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is what we do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The big out there. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. I came back here and I like, so I have like two great sports teams, like Penn State football. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, sure. The whole Sandusky thing happened. Well, that's yeah. when I was a baby. Like, show me where he touched you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bubble. <laughs> and then he fed me to the orcas. <laughs> And then, you know, when I came back after, I was like, oh, shit, I have the Eagles. You know, like, I I realized what, like, the whole, like, Philly fan culture was. Mm -hmm. And then we won the Super Bowl. And I was like, damn, I got two great teams. Luckiest night of my life. I was off the night of the Super Bowl parade. I mean, like, did you have, like, buddies that were working? Like, what was their life? Yes, I don't care. (laughs) I don't care. I didn't ask. I'm not a shoulder to Mm -hmm. lean on. Nobody's been there for me. (laughs) Fuck you guys. Fuck the cops who work the parade and the orcas. Yeah. Yes. I was so glad to be off that night though. Yeah. It was it was a mess. It was terrible. People they were they were like greasing the poles mm-hmm. up on Frankfurt Avenue. So oh, people yeah. couldn't climb the poles and whatnot. Only in Philadelphia do you have to grease the fucking poles. Yeah, I mean they have uh, like I saw recently, like in South Philly, they have like uh it was a couple weeks ago, they had like a food festival mm-hmm. and they have like a actually like a grease pole climbing competition. It, because it's because it's Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's why I mean I was like yeah. I was so lucky. Like this was like I was this was my like like this is like by default my Man. city because I'm lands like and I hate those people sometimes that are like they're born in one state and then they just ride for another state because yeah. they're winners like yeah. I was like damn like dude yeah. I'm like when I learned how great this city was mm-hmm. I was like damn I, I was blessed that my it's a it's a here. it's a fun place to be yeah. when you know when people are acting right I haven't been heavy in sports mm-hmm. since AI left yeah it's been a long time since I've been since I could say I was a fan. Of a sports team, yeah, yeah. I just started following basketball again this year. Like mm-hmm. I, I watched this season. I'm watching the finals now. Yeah, and I'll watch. You know, I'll, I'll continue watching now because I mean the the guys are good. They're fun to watch. Mm-hmm. But I haven't been a I haven't been a sports fan since since AI left Philly. It's been tough. I feel that. Yeah. I uh, like uh, what Ben Simmons was trash. Well, I oh, really God. got into sports because of the the culture of like just like you know like the party culture right because mm-hmm. that's where my addiction really is mm-hmm. but then i got into sports gambling which really ruined oh, me wow. for a minute because <laughs> <laughs> i only bet on my teams right okay like, i don't i'm not out here like one of these dudes that's like oh like you got like um like sunday football and i'm gonna mm. bet on every game like, right no, i'm i'm betting right. on the eagles right every time i get that and right. i'm gonna lose most of the time most of the and time doug yeah. peterson like had that like last game like two years ago and he like let in the rookie and put out Jalen Hurts. And like, you know, I had a, a money on that game. And you know, I think we could have potentially won that game. Nobody <laughs> called you. Nobody <laughs> consulted you. They? No one consults the whole city. Yeah, man. this is this is why I can't get into it. I I tried betting uh the this last couple of rounds in the playoffs. Uh, so my cousin put me on the fan door. Yeah. And he was showing me like some of the some of the stuff he's won, uh-huh. and shows me some of the bets other people make and how easy it is. And it's, I I don't have money to throw away. Yeah, that's what it was. It I was like- can't <laughs> I can't do it. I think I may have spent twenty bucks on FanDuel. Yeah. It's like I lost my little twenty bucks. I'm good. I, I could have bought a bottle of whiskey for twenty bucks. Yeah, and won. And enjoy your night. <laughs> I yeah. would have won. That's a win as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't just keep pouring money down that drain. I can't do it. It's never been a thing for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. it just was like a like a one time thing, and now like you know like now that I've zeroed out, like mm-hmm. I'm like uh, uh-uh. you can't invest any more in this because you don't right. know sports, bro. <laughs> invest. Let's I like be that. honest. Like, you, a, you don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All I'm, I, I'm honestly, I'm just guessing, right? I'm just guessing. Yeah. I'm looking for names I recognize. Yeah. and I'm just throwing money away and I could I could 
I could not do that. Yeah. I could not do that. Yeah, like, I was okay. betting on, like, the 76ers when Ben Simmons was playing. And oh, God, my man, man. Was, was so scared to shoot the ball. Yeah. And I was like, I just like, just shoot it, man. I got money. Something. Yeah. Just do something. I have a bet that you'll shoot the ball once. <laughs> so shoot the ball once, it's right? Like yeah. He's like, trying to make us all lose. My oh, life. man. Yeah, that, 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 was a, that, was a, that, was that was a once in a lifetime sort of event yeah i've never seen anything like that in an in an entire lifetime of watch there's like that and mike tyson biting holyfield's ear yeah it's like that it, you know what i mean there's nothing else like that happening in sports a guy who just refuses to shoot the ball yeah i was like yeah. that's your job too like that's weird wasn't he like what is that position called like the point he's shooter? a point guard yeah point yeah. guard yeah exactly I, that's how i very much know it, 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 <laughs> it, neither does he yeah, yeah exactly yeah you you and ben simmons know exactly the same amount <laughs> about that position absolutely yeah and i remember like so like my mom's birthday was like last monday and like i took her out like to the mall and shit mm. just like to hang out right and i remember like there was like this leather store in montgomery mall mm. and i went in there and like it was like 50 percent off authentic jerseys right <laughs> and i was like i was like oh hell yeah like finally i can get a jersey rep my city right because it's 50 percent <laughs> off <laughs> <laughs> and i go in there they're all benson's yeah. jerseys <laughs> And I just like looked at like the foreign lady. I was like, "Madam, you're better off just burning these and putting it on TikTok or something." You know? Don't they? I thought they used to send clothes to Africa, the kids in Africa. Uh, Did they send them back? I don't. Yeah, maybe probably. they sent them and they no sent them back. No one wants these. Like, uh, even like the, the, the there was like a white dude. He must have been like like around my age. He was like, "Yeah, I agree with him. Like, no one is gonna buy these." Yeah, he I would rock a Ben Simmons jersey. I'm big in the irony. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because uh, well, think about it, right? A cop wearing uh, a jersey from a guy. Who won't shoot? Mm. Wow, that, that all makes sense. That, see, or people just might start doing more crimes around <laughs> you because they're pissed. He's at not going to shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck He's this not pussy. Shoot. That guy's not going to shoot me. I'm good. Uh. I was just like, oh my god, Ben Simmons. Like, what? This is why one of those Jenner bitches left you. Like, you know, you suck. I, I don't. I don't know what kind of a, he blames on on a breakdown. I, I'm sure that might have been the start of it, but after a while, it's kind of like I think I think you just feel a little dug in, yeah, and you you don't know how to get back out. And everybody in the world, even now that he's in New Jersey, mm-hmm. we would all just be happy if you just started playing basketball yeah. again. Just play basketball again. Mm-hmm. You don't have to talk about it. Nobody's going to ask you about it. You can refuse to answer questions. Just play basketball again, and he won't even do that. He won't. Yeah. Like, you know who he needs? He needs Adam Sandler. You know, like, (laughs) (laughs) dude, I cannot believe how good that movie is. Yo, I watched it last night, too. Just like, you know, know, when uh, I almost like started crying at the point where like he's like saw his kid, you know, but also last night I was feeling really emotional. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you just just went through it. You just went through a thing. There was a couple of parts of that that. movie. I was like, damn, bro. It was, it was, it was, it was a really Good. Now I heard Uncut Jewels is good. I haven't watched. Yeah, it. Uncut I'm gonna, Gems. Yeah, I'm going to watch that now. Yeah, you have to. It was really good. Too. I watched that now that I've seen this because I really wasn't believing in mm-hmm. Adam Sandler. I wasn't buying it. Yeah. But this the movie is so good. It's so well made. Yeah. It's so well acted. Everybody did such a great job. Mm-hmm. And I, I was, I was, in, I was in awe watching yeah. it. I was watching it like this is really good, yeah. <laughs> like, but it was great. I really resonated like uh, when he quit the job, and that's when I was like, "Yeah, Sandler, yeah, quit the job." <laughs> He's just such a good work. that dude playing that character did such a great job oh, yeah, playing he was a dick. Great too. It, was, it was, it was, it was a real, it was a really good hustle. Is a really good mm-hmm. movie. It's a very Philly movie. Oh, yeah. I don't like the, I don't like like everybody's so focused on how how well it reps the city. I don't think it reps the city very well at all i didn't see anybody get robbed <laughs> so yeah. i don't i don't know that it reps the city all that well but it's a very good movie it's a very good sports movie mm-hmm. i compared it to blue chips yeah, yeah I, I think that. blue chips is one of the best sports movies ever mm-hmm. and I, it's it's up there with that one and i haven't seen one especially when it comes to basketball right i haven't seen a like a basketball movie that good in uh, a very long time i'll have to check out blue chip i never seen it but now that Shaquille you Shaquille o'neal and penny blue hardaway blue uh, nick nolte mm-hmm. nick nolte oh my god blue chips is awesome yeah, I, yeah. i'll really check it out i'll watch yeah. it tonight because you know now i'm a, i got no one to watch movies with. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you know what my favorite part about that movie is when he has to do that run up the Maniunk Hill. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, I've walked up this hill wasted so many times. And this dude is just it's running. terrible, bro. It's so they guys are coming by on the bikes. He's making them race the guys on the bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they did a really, they did a really good job. They did a good job with that one. I was, I was impressed. I was yeah. actually very impressed. Yeah. Yo, so when you became a detective, is there any, like, uh, animosity from the like the people that are still cops or anything like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's, there's always a little bit. Uh, because ultimately, what happens is, is when you're a patrol officer, mm-hmm. and say you got a you got a report, right? You take a report of a domestic, and you're bringing me a complaint, and I sure. got to interview them and everything, and you write a report. I have to go over everything that you did, mm-hmm. right? So the the biggest thing between detectives and cops is details, mm-hmm. right? Because everything you hand me, I have to work with now. Okay. So if you misinformation in a report. I'm going to miss information in my investigation, right? And, right. And stuff I have to find out in the course of, you know, interviewing people. And now I got to go out and I got to go out and find the information right. that you didn't get. I was taught uh, by my instructors at the police academy that the patrol officer is the preliminary investigator. Sure. Right. You're not just a cop showing up, trying to quiet everybody down, but you're the guy, you're the first person there trying to find out what actually happened. Okay. And you're the preliminary investigator. And that's the way I approached it when I was in patrol. And it's actually the way detectives would like patrol officers to to you know to address things. Right. Get as many details as possible. Uh so that that that's that's the most you'll get between cops and, and detectives mm-hmm. is that, you know, ultimately I ha- I have to work with what you bring me and if you bring me something that's incomplete, you know, we all have a harder job. Right. Yeah. Is there ever a situation where like a cop doesn't want to become a detective and he just wants to be a cop? Oh, there's plenty of them. Yeah, I know. I know tons and tons of career cops. Okay. I I didn't. I at the time that I made detective, I was at Highway Patrol, which was a dream come true for mm-hmm. me. And I didn't want to be a detective anymore. Like okay. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I took the test and then I got into the unit. And then while I was in the unit, I found that I had scored well enough to get promoted. Right. And I was going to have to leave the unit. I basically became a cop to join. Right. So it was it was kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do it. <laughs> why, was, why, why did you like highway? Like, it's, like when I imagine highway patrol, mm-hmm. I'm zipping down the highway and you're mm-hmm. just one of those dudes posted. Mm-hmm. Like, why did you like highway? That's not what highway patrol is oh, okay. in Philadelphia. <laughs> okay. In Philadelphia, highway patrol is the name of the unit that is actually tasked with going into the most high crime unit uh, mm-hmm. neighborhoods okay. and looking for like guns. Oh. Like if you like if that's really the simplest way to put it. Right. That is like your number one goal as a highway patrol officer is you go into the hood, you come back out with guns. Okay. That's that's the that's the mission. Uh anything short of that, guys doing robberies, things like that. You are, it's a crime fighting unit. Okay. Uh, they're also uh, responsible for uh, high profile motorcades and stuff. You, the guys on the motorcycles you see leading sure. the president when they come to town. Yeah. Those are highway guys. Those are, those are my guys. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of that. Uh, the guys you see on the field at the Eagles games mm-hmm. with, the, with the boots and the, yeah, yeah. those are highway guys. That's okay. Us. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I it's definitely a, had a wrong it's a idea. Very, it's a very elite unit with a lot of high, high profile responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one being going into the neighborhoods and getting violent criminals out. Sure. Um, the the name is it's a it's not a misnomer. The name it's a very old unit, Mm -hmm. and it used to be more like a traffic thing. Sure. And but and guys on the motorcycles and stuff like that, dealing with traffic and whatnot. The name is carried on, but the mission is 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 mostly violent crime. Right. Yeah. I feel that. Oh, that's a yeah. See, that's another thing you yeah. just taught me. Yeah, and it's it's a question I get from a lot of people. Uh, if you Google Philadelphia Highway Patrol, you'll you'll see it's got a very long history. It's a very long and rich history in that unit. Yeah. I wish I actually Googled that because I googled a lot of things, hmm. and that was uh, something I definitely should have Googled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's 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 nice to be able to explain it. And yeah, give, give people the opportunity. Yeah, no, like you, that's like one it. of the reasons because you know I've had such a weird interaction with cops my mm-hmm. whole life and i was like oh shit like lawrence is that like you know because i first met you as a comedian mm-hmm. right at uh vesper <laughs> you know? yep. so uh i was just like oh shit oh like i need to be educated in cops too because mm-hmm. you know like when i first moved to philly 
in uh what was it 2017 i was like i started watching the news every night because uh i wanted to be informed about my city right mm -hmm. and then you know like what what do we hear every night like we are on a literally like there has been a shooting every day since 2017 probably before because mm -hmm. um that's when i first moved in yep. so i was like man like these cops here have a hard time Absolutely. and now like uh, I've been in a history of trouble, mm. and like I just think about like you know you guys had a very easy target. It was a little brown boy who was just having a good time, but like when yeah. I came here, I was like, man, these guys actually have to do work in dangerous situations, yeah. right? Yeah. So let me ask you this: like, is the Philly gun like situation or gun violence? Is that like is that actually solvable? It's it's not solvable by police alone. Okay. It's absolutely something that is going to require uh, the cooperation of the community. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's only so much you could do with police presence. Right. Uh, back in the early 2000s, they had a thing they did. It was called Safe Streets. Sure. What's that? Safe Streets was where you would just take all the cops mm -hmm. and put them out in the neighborhood like all the time. Right. Right. So you would walk outside and there would be a cop standing on your corner 24 hours a day on your busy corner right? right it was a lot of in kensington and different parts of north philly and southwest and west philly they were just like putting cops on traffic posts in violent neighborhoods okay so that there was a car with lights going and a cop just standing out on your block all day long we don't have the personnel for that anymore i believe that right we don't have the people for that we also don't have the communities for that because in neighborhoods where there are cops on traffic posts, there are shootings happening around the corner. Mm. People don't don't respond to police presence the way they used to just 10 or 15 years ago. Police presence is a is a is a minor inconvenience to the people that are committing these violent acts today. It's like, oh, there's a cop there. OK, I'll give him five minutes. He won't be there for long. I'll wait. I'll stand here with this gun on me that this cop doesn't know I have right now. And I'll wait. Or I'll get you when you walk around the corner. The, it, the police presence doesn't have the same impact that it used to. Mm. So what's happening now is the violence is going to occur. And what we need is help from the people who know who's doing it in order to take them off the street. The thing we need after that, because the police, Philly made a record number of, of gun arrests last year. Okay. Over 2,000 guns. Damn. Like, they're locking up people with guns left and right the cops are out there doing it whether or not those guys stay in jail or go to prison and stay out of the community that's out of the police's hands mm -hmm. you know what i mean whose so, hands is that in that's in the hands of the district attorneys okay and in in the courts you know what i mean in in an in an age where we basically don't want to send people to prison mm -hmm. right there's there's this you know we're anti mass incarceration and so forth in an age where you don't want to send people to prison, there's only so much the police could do. We could take you off the streets. We can get your gun. You know, the way I see it, I've always, I've always reasoned that every gun arrest is at least one life saved. Sure. Right? That makes sense. If you're carrying, at, I, and I, I, never, I never hear anybody else speak about it this way, but everybody that's out here carrying a gun illegally, mm -hmm. you're either going to get killed or kill somebody. So if I, as a police officer, get you into custody and get that gun from you, I may have just saved your life. Right. Right? Yeah, no, I agree with that. And so, but it, as far as like actually solving the problem and bringing the crime down, bringing the violence down, it's a matter of, I believe, it's a matter of actually getting violent people out of our communities. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that is, is we, unfortunately, we send them to prison. Mm -hmm. You know, I say unfortunately because it goes against the narrative and it goes against the goals of people who think that, you know, the, the criminal justice system is unfair. Yeah. But ultimately, it's, you know. You don't live in a dangerous, uh, pl like a dangerous enough place like to yeah. like, like the people that don't think that way mm -hmm. don't live in a dangerous place. You know what I mean? I, I, I think that people, I, I think that people are more willing to live amongst dangerous circumstances than they are to say dangerous people need to go to prison. Mm. It's just not a popular opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there are people who are willing to live. There are people who live on Temple Campus. Mm -hmm. Temple Campus is in the 22nd District. It's one of the most violent neighborhoods oh, yeah. in the city and has been for, since the dawn of time. 
since Billy Penn was walking around here. That area has been dangerous. Uh -huh. And there are people who live there. They go to school there. They live there and amongst all the violence that happens there. Yeah. People are willing to live amongst the violence. Mm -hmm. And they're more willing to live amongst the violence than they are to say, you violent people need to get away from here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's just not a popular opinion to say violent criminals need to go to prison. Yeah. No, I, <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm agreeing with you. Like, I, th I think they need to go <laughs> I to prison. Appreciate that. I don't yeah. like, uh, you know, like I remember like one time, I, the first time I came to Penn, uh, uh, Temple, like what from Penn State to visit my boy Grayson, he went to Temple. Mm -hmm. And like I went to like some chick's house, like, you know, just whatever it was. But then eventually I was like, oh, I'm going to go meet up with Grayson because I'm sleeping there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it was like, like, a bunch of cops like came down the street, uh, uh, clearing out the street mm -hmm. because I guess there might have been some type of violence, or maybe like up up the road. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Shit!" And like a helicopter just came out of nowhere, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah, man. Like people go to school. Yes, here. yes. Oh my god, that place is wild. It is wild. Yeah. And like, and then on top of that, you have all these kids that are just wasted out mm -hmm. of their mind. Mm -hmm. and I'm just like, I was like, I did not feel safe. You know? I, what I what I'll say. And what I, I'll, I'll say it over and over again, mm -hmm. uh, that the only saving grace in the city of Philadelphia right now is the targeted nature of the violence. It's not like, like people get robbed, right? Sure. And in the course of a robbery, you know, things can happen. But when you see like, you know, a uh, person sitting in a car and a car got sprayed up, right? Two people sitting in a car, a car got sprayed mm -hmm. up. Like, the person who did that shooting was looking for that person in yeah. that car. It's almost it's almost guaranteed. A lot of times, it's not random. A lot of times, it's yeah. it's it's very rarely <laughs> random. Now, things can happen where you know that person that you're looking for might be with his baby mom, mm. might be with his kid, right? Yeah. But this is still a very targeted event, right? It's not like you know, Bavik was trying to go to the 7-Eleven uh -huh. and he got sprayed up 25 times yeah. like on the corner of... <laughs> exactly. it, 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 that's, that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? When people get, get hurt in the course of a robbery, it's because, you know, I'm not really a fan of getting robbed. What do you mean yeah. you're robbing me? You know what I'm saying? But for the, the, very, the very worst violence that we see in this city is very often very targeted. Right. And it's, it's our only saving grace. It's mm -hmm. the only reason why there's only, you know, 600 murders, not 800. Yeah. Because they're not it's it's very rare that some random person coming from work mm -hmm. gets sprayed up on a corner yeah. in Hunting Park. It's just not the case. Yeah, like my my mom has always been like, "Oh, Bobby, when are you going to move out of Philly?" Like she's like very scared because she watches news every night. And that's God what bless I, her. That's what I always try to explain to her. I was like, "Mom, no one's gonna come out here." and just like shoot me mm -hmm. you know like whatever is going on like they have beef with each other absolutely and it's like yeah. you know like yeah. if the only way i'm gonna get shot if it's a it's a stray bullet right and uh like you know like that's like the wildest thing to me like right. when you like hear this news of like like several times maybe in the last like two years i've seen this or like on the news it's like uh there's like a child mm -hmm. on a porch mm -hmm. and a stray bullet hits the child mm -hmm. and i'm like like Bro, if you're going to go out there and do some of this shit, like right. you just have some aim. I I would like I think people fantasize previous generations mm -hmm. when it comes to that kind of thing. You, you I hear all the time, I used to be no women and no kids. It, it's never been that. Yeah. It's never been that. Criminals in the street have never cared about who else was around. What they cared about was maybe not being seen mm -hmm. so much. But there, was, I don't know that there was ever a time where it was like women and kids was off limits. Right. We're not going to do this on a, like, like, did you watch The Wire? No. Nah. You didn't watch The Wire? Nah, there, was a thing on, there was a thing on The Wire uh, where in Baltimore, apparently, there was like a Sunday truce, mm -hmm. right? So they didn't, they didn't, nobody, nobody shot each other on Sunday. I love that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that, that's never been a thing here. Mm -hmm. I've never, like my brother, my brother was heavy in the streets when I was growing up and I don't remember them ever saying, you know, we are, well, let's, let's make sure it ain't no kids around when we right. go over there. I've never heard that before. Well, no, uh, it's not that I'm like, I'm saying like, mm -hmm. you know, they don't like, I agree. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like women and children, like if you're about to do something like fuck women and children. Right. right? But well, it's just like the the ricochet. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, like 
I just kind of do like the stats in my head, like the odds, mm-hmm. man. It's yep. it's like so upsetting. I'm like, whoa, man. It's just it's terrible, man. It's you, terrible. Yeah. Can't you have like better aim? Like that's all I yeah. ask, you know. Like just, they they could they've got the ammunition and they they have the time. They could be practicing that shit. But like, yeah, there's there's just this disregard for. I used to think there was a lack of value mm-hmm. for life, and I've come to realize that that's not the case. Because these guys value their own lives. Right. Right. They value the lives of their friends that they're retaliating against mm-hmm. you for. You know what I'm saying? But there is a disregard for who else is like around. Like stray lives. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there's definitely disregard. So when you said like you guys went through and captured like the most guns last year, like 2000, whatever you said, mm-hmm. that number. Um, what Like what kind of guns are you getting in the sense like um, are they just like people buy these guns at like a, a Dick's or a Walmart then scratch off the serial numbers mm-hmm. or like. Like where, where I've rarely, guns? I've only seen a few guns like in the course of my career with like an obliterated serial number. That's not something people usually okay. take the time to do. It's, so it's, like, that's where, are the, like, where, where are these guns coming? Like what type? Like oh, I'm man. so uh, a lot naive of, to it. So like a lot of guns are stolen, mm-hmm. um, and it, that most most of them, are, a lot of them are stolen. Okay, there I take I get a lot of reports people. Reporting their guns stolen. I'm always fishy about somebody who's had their gun stolen. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, because it, it because I'm a gun owner. Okay. Right, and I know I'm a responsible gun owner, mm-hmm. and I know the extent, the you know, the the lengths that I go to to secure my firearms, right. and I know I know what not to do to keep my gun from getting stolen. Mm-hmm. What I found is that a lot of people who are not like educated gun owners. They treat the they treat the cell phone better than they treat their guns. I see. You know what I mean? I like, like you you have your phones. Like you you're filming us on phones. Uh huh. These phones live in tripods. Yeah. But they have cases on them. Mm-hmm. They don't even come out of these tripods. <laughs> They're not going outside. Yeah. They're not going to the back room. Uh, They're not going there. But they have cases on yeah. them. Yeah. Right. The average per, the average gun owner doesn't take this good care of their gun. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, you, I'm going into the restaurant. I'm going to leave my gun in my glove box. You wouldn't leave your phone in your glove box no. and go in a restaurant. You're not going to do it. In a city where people are taking shit. Yeah. It's just irresponsible to think that, well, I mean, they, you wouldn't leave your wallet in the in the car. Why would you leave your gun? Why would right. you? Your, 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 your car is not a secure location. Mm-hmm. It's not a safe place to keep anything for an extended period of time. Right. And something like a gun. So if somebody tells me they left their gun in, a, in their car, while they were going in a restaurant to eat. Yeah. And this is a person who has like a permit to carry. So you could take your gun in a restaurant. Mm. Right. Yeah. That, that sounds fishy to me. Yeah. It's you know? irresponsible. Like I want to look, I want to look further into that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that time that you did that, somebody happens to try your car door handle mm-hmm. and happens to try your glove box. And oh, your so gun it's happens almost to be- like you're like, oh, my gun is left there, bro. This might be a good opportunity for you to come take it. You know what I mean? Uh, I had a house party and I went to the store and I left people in my house. And then after the party, I checked my closet and my gun was missing. Mm. It's just kind of like that. That's super weird to yeah. me. You know what I mean? When my nephews come over, all of my guns are in my safe mm-hmm. unless I'm putting one on to go out the door. Right. But I don't have like I don't have people over, and they're just hanging around. I don't have eat. anybody in my house who would take my gun. Right. I don't have like there's no reason for you to be in my house if I think you might walk out of here with one of my guns. So you know things like that are, are they're always going to be fishy to me because it's just not it's it's not realistic mm-hmm. from a safety standpoint. Right. You know, and if you're a person who carries a gun? You're obviously concerned with gun violence. Yeah. You're concerned with being a victim of violence. Which means you ought to be concerned about your gun getting out there into the street and victimizing somebody else. I see. You know? Yeah. But a lot of the guns that we get are stolen. They're stolen in burglaries, they're stolen from cars. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of them are straw purchases. Uh people where you they the feds just lock somebody up who these guys bought like sixty guns over the course of like a year. What? What are you doing with sixty guns? Yeah, and and, and that's a, that's from a gun guy, uh-huh. right? I have four guns, right? Right. So, but like, yeah, you bought sixty guns as a as a gun dealer. Yeah, I I have to start taking it. 
I, I find it strange that they lock the guys up uh-huh. and the gun dealers are not facing any sort of charges at yeah. all. Yeah. It's a very strange thing. Like, what are you thinking to do with to be, 60 guns? You know what I mean? And how are you comfortable with selling me a gun every three days? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, like, you don't have any questions. You're not going to call the police and say, hey, listen, this guy's been in my store. He's bought 12 guns in the last two weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. But that's where a lot of stuff comes from. Interesting. Yeah. Have you came across any 3D printed guns? I know like that was when they were talking about like getting all the guns off. Like p- nerds were coming out here like, yo, mm. I can just 3D print this shit. I haven't I haven't come across any of those yet. Mm. Um there are there are companies that make that make like unserialized parts. Mm-hmm. Uh like lowers and grips and stuff right. for guns that you can add other parts to. Uh, Polymer 80 is one of those mm-hmm. companies. Polymer 80 makes grips that kind of resemble Glocks, and then you can you can buy slides and firing mechanisms and stuff like that. And then like there's no like serial number on a Polymer 80, right? And and that that's the closest I've come to something that's like a like a 3D printed gun. But I haven't found anything that people have like made at home. You know? Interesting. Yeah. yeah, man. Like I want to get a gun eventually when I buy a house. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason, you know. Mm-hmm. And I would like put them in lucrative spots like you know like hmm. uh position like in the wall where you'd have to like, press yeah. the wall and it just pops out yeah. right so no one even knows right you know like that we have one it's right. just when shit hits the fan i think you need to have one right there's a there's a fine line between you know security and availability mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but there's also there's also a consideration for who you are yeah and your likelihood of needing a gun quickly mm-hmm. you know what i mean you you make decisions. You first, first things first. You make a decision about how you're going to live your life. Mm-hmm. You're not a drug kingpin, so there's there's one strike that you don't have to worry about, right. right? There's there's one factor you don't have to worry about. Nobody's coming in here looking for my drug stash. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have to worry about that, right? But if you maybe you run a small business, right, and you keep cash, a lot of a lot of Asian people tend not to like to use banks. They they tend to keep a lot of cash in their homes. And you find them getting followed home from work a lot. Mm. And then people come into their houses and they take this stuff. So it, you don't necessarily have to be a drug dealer to worry about people coming in your home. Right. But you you have to you have to understand the the factors. Yeah. You know, and the way that you've des- decided to live your life. Right. So and the way who knows yeah. how you live your life. Well, that's important. Who knows? If, yeah. if, you know what I'm saying? So then, then you then you factor in the balance between safety and availability, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I've you know I've got my guns in a safe. I have a safe in my bedroom, mm-hmm. and I but I also don't live a very high risk life, right? So I'm not really worried about anybody running in my house in broad daylight, yeah, right? So at night I have something by the bedside because mm-hmm. who knows what weirdo might think to kick my door in the middle of the night, right? But in the middle of the day when we're all home, just kind of chilling, it's I don't have I'm not not living that sort of lifestyle. No, that's fair. Yeah. So you're also a father. How do you like? How do you like raise a kid in today's age? Oh God! How, like, like what? Are, like, how? Like, you know, like there's like your like your youngest is already born in like the era of the phone, mm-hmm. right? So like, how do you even mm-hmm. like control? I'm not even saying control, but let's say use the word educate. Like, how to properly use a phone? How to like uh, like taking all this information that's coming, you know, I mean, in like, you know, you look at the news and the media, it's also like one way or the other. Like, mm. how do you, wh- what are you doing to like, you know, kind of set them straight in a way of like what's oh, right and wrong? Uh, communication. Mm. Communication from day one. Mm. Uh, I, I used to tease my wife about talking to babies. She used to talk to my, my niece who lives with us now. Okay. Uh, who has been, she's been pretty much part of my household most of her life. But she's been living with us for the last four years. But even when she was when she was a baby, my wife would talk to her, like we're talking right, right. now. And I, said, why are you talking? This baby I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> they totally understand, uh-huh. and it makes it has every every impact. It means everything to that kid's ability to communicate with you later on. I I didn't I didn't get it until my daughter was born. Mm-hmm. My daughter's eleven now. She's the most articulate, most thoughtful. I've never seen a kid like this before. Right. And I didn't get it. I I understand now it's because she's been spoken to like a person from the minute she came out of the womb. Mm. There was never any baby talk. We never, there was never any like real slang. 
coochie coochie coo. Yeah. And none of that. You give a kid real language and the ability to make decisions as early as absolutely possible. And that kid understands the consequences of decision making. Oh, yeah. What do you want for dinner? As soon as that kid can tell you, as soon as they can point to ravioli or SpaghettiOs, what do you want for dinner? They point to the SpaghettiOs. When they turn out they don't like SpaghettiOs, they're never going to point at the fucking SpaghettiOs again. Mm. And that, that has been the most critical tool to raise in our kids that I've seen. Right. Uh, when it comes to the phone and the information, media and all of the stuff that's being thrown at them, you try your best to regulate what it is that they take in. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't have cable. Nice. Mm-hmm. I didn't grow up with cable either. Yeah, I, I, we, I cut the cable off in. I cut the cable off after the election in 2016. Okay. Um, I re- I just realized that we hadn't turned the TVs on in like a couple of months, mm-hmm. and I cut the cable off. Sure. So now anything we take in, we have to seek out, mm-hmm. right? So you got to go to YouTube. And search for what you want to watch. Okay. Versus just having shit thrown at you. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah. We don't get weird. Com- we don't get a lot of commercials and stuff thrown at us, and mm. not a lot of like uninvited information. Yeah, yeah. Everything you want, you go find. My my youngest, she has like TikTok on her mom's on her mom's iPad. She gets to use TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really that's it as far as like actual social media. Okay. And TikTok is TikTok can be wild, dude. TikTok. You know? Did you ever know that? Let- TikTok in America is like dumb, but TikTok in Asia is like very like sciencey and math. I'm not surprised. Yeah, by like they yeah. are they are playing a big game. Yeah, and I was like, whoa, like because you know every time I go on TikTok, like my TikTok algorithm is like now like you know like some of my friends that build shit. Mm. Uh, there's dogs, mm. but it, every now and again there's just like ass ass ass. Right, and yeah. I'm like come, like. If, the kids over there are just seeing science and shit, you know? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no wonder yeah, America's yeah. falling behind. Yeah, it's a mess. It's, I'm not, I'm not surprised by that at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot more heavily regulated by the government over there, so mm. it, it, I get that, and God bless them for that, yeah. because, you know, that we could use a lot less ass in our feeds. We can. Days. Yeah. It, it really makes us numb to it, and then we can't appreciate a nice ass in real life. When you see one in real life, it's almost like, you know, these are out here in the street. Yeah. Yeah, they're all over the place, <laughs> And the, the asses that you're looking at on like the social media, they're all fake ass. Right, you know? like, right. Uh. I I've yet to actually grab a, a fake ass in my mm. life, but you know, I'm I'm very curious like what it actually feels like. You it know? doesn't look inviting. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, no, it doesn't look inviting at all. Because I like when the ass matches the thigh. Right. You know, like it has to have like, cause, you know. Nobody I, nobody gets the whole set. <laughs> yeah, why is yeah, that? They it's like they only get the ass. <laughs> They never get the whole kit. It's like they don't even offer it down there they in the Dominican. They don't offer it. Uh, you know, Lawrence, this is what the business we need to go in. This is this is it. The we whole should be, lower body. We should be doing. We should just be doing thighs. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should just be doing thighs. The, the doctors in the DR are doing asses. We could be. Hey, when you get off the plane, you need some thighs. Come to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> we got the thighs. Like yeah. does that uh, you said like uh being like in the uh like the police department they offer you like uh you can switch departments man mm-hmm. like we got to make that a department you can Absolutely. switch it to yeah the side 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 detail and then you can hire me yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it I like this I love that and like how like okay so all right so we did like um one last thing on raising kids is like mm-hmm. uh how do you uh like kind of control not like control but like educate them on like you know like these are good people to hang out with. These mm-hmm. are bad people to hang out Because my mom, my whole life, told me, like, Bobby, you have to make good friends, right? <laughs> and I always told her, like, Mom, my friends are good. Uh-uh. I'm like, I'm actually the worst one. Mom. Right, and right. Then, like, the, you should be warning them about me. Yeah. yeah. And then now that I'm, like, this old, I'm like, oh, I kind of see what she means. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, there are some people that want to go out there and, like, make money, make something on themselves. Mm-hmm. There are some people that are complacent, like, uh, with this, like, like minimal lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Like, And then some people don't have, like, the best intentions for you. They're going right. to use you for this or that. Right. So like, how does, how do you there's, do that? There's some trial and error. Um, it's, I've, I've got a very unique experience between my two kids because my oldest just kind of came into the house, uh-huh. uh, like in the seventh, eighth grade. She's in high school now. Okay. So, uh, she's been to a couple different schools mm-hmm. versus, my my little one who's been in school with this group of friends pretty much since pre-k okay and she's going to the sixth grade next year sure so her group of friends and they they actually grew up together 
So they kind of weed themselves out mm. over time. I see. Whereas the oldest one just went to high school last year. Freshman year was almost all online. Mm -hmm. So sophomore year this year, she gets to go to school and actually make friends and spend time with friends. And you start to see, you know, who's, you know, who's who's offering you a vape pen and who actually wants to help you study. Right. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, well, then you, you know, you, you then see. Do you come in and be like, all right, like that vape pen person it might not be the best. Precisely. OK. That's exactly it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And I like that. So it did, there's some trial and error and, you know, kids got to make got to make mistakes. The mistakes mistakes are just as important as anything else. I agree. Yeah. The biggest mistake I made in my life was sticking a needle into an electrical socket. That'll do it. That will do it. I did that at a yeah. very young age. And you know, my, I asked my dad, like, Dad, what happens? He yeah. just said, don't do it. Yeah. And I was like, a little, I'm a high energy little boy. I'm like, oh, Dad. Uh. And he's like an old immigrant man. And he's like, just don't. What do does it. he know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have electric sockets where you came from. <laughs> yeah. You lived in a village. You guys have electricity? I don't think so. This is magic to you yeah, what are you talking and about? I did it and I learned yeah. and I've never did it since <laughs> I once held a dartboard wow yeah yep where like in front of your face like over my fucking oh head my yes God. I held it in the worst possible way oh my I once God. held a dartboard for a homie I caught a dart right here in the wrist Jesus Christ. A fucking a dart. It was the scariest shit ever because I pulled it out and it shit started squirting out. It was the scariest thing ever. I thought I was going to die. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would too. So mistakes are, mistakes are, they're good they lessons. are vital. And then you can, Absolutely. in the future, tell like, you know, if you yeah. ever have a son because the sons are the ones that do the dumb They're, shit. The sons are the ones who hold the dartboard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No daughter is going to yes. be like, hey, uh, she'll be like, I'll pass. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I asked my kid mm -hmm. to hold a dartboard for me, she would ask me if I I had gone fucking insane yeah. and she would say it verbatim have you lost your fucking <laughs> mind <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. i don't want to seem like a feminist but like women are actually smarter than god men. bless them yeah. yes they are. They thankfully yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thankfully so mm -hmm. yeah do you know who azealia banks is i've I've heard the name. So she's like a so young, sweet. like a rapper, mu musician, right? Right. But right. She has like a lot of attitude, and she has very, um, like, outgoing ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And she recently did like a pride show over the weekend. Okay. And uh, she showed up like two hours late, right? <laughs> but the kicker was her outfit was like this corset with her titties just out. Okay. And like she hasn't she's having so much attitude with the crowd mm. she's like blaming the promoters and eventually the crowd turns on her and starts booing her nice right so what i was thinking is is like imagine doing comedy you're doing it butt naked and now the crowd <laughs> starts to boo you right like man like oh, man what kind of how much worse can this get yeah guys? and like <laughs> Like, don't get me wrong. Like, she has, like, a, a nice set of boobs. I don't mm. know if they're real or fake. Mm. But, like, if you have, like, a janky dick, like, dude, man. My There's dick, nothing you can do about that dude, either. Yeah, it's going inside. There's no corset nothing. to, like, <laughs> you can't, nothing, there's nothing you can do about that. I, yeah. I was just thinking, like, yeah, people hate her. But I was like, man, like, she is such a strong woman. It takes a lot of guts. To go out and, and like expose yourself that way and have a shitty attitude. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, like strippers do it all the time, but they have wonderful attitudes. Yeah. You know, it's nice like ladies. the complete opposite. Yeah. It's like they want you mm -hmm. come in to me. You know yeah. what I mean? Not not fuck you. Look at my tits. And she was don't go together. too. That was the thing. So I was like, bro, like. Is she even like, is she even on the spectrum? Is she LGBTQ? Is she on the spectrum? <laughs> I mean, every girl. Is that the proper? That's not the right term. Those two don't go together. <laughs> Those don't go together. She on the spectrum. Well, she's on some type of spectrum. Yeah, she's a rainbow, rainbow yeah. spectrum. Same thing. Right? I mean, oh, I feel like every woman is a little LBGTQ. The, they're, you know? they're little. They're, they're little, little LB. <laughs> <laughs> Touch an LB. They're okay. little gay. Right. You know, I see my girl, ex girl, you know, kiss a girl. So I know they're a uh, little gay. They're a little uh, LB. Uh, yeah, that's cool. And dudes can be a little gay too, depending how comfortable you are. I'm not, the, I'm not got picking the, sides. Got the plus. That's what the, what the plus is for. Yeah. Hey, non discriminate. Hey. Now, after this, you and your your youngest are gonna go rollerblading. Yeah, my kids. Uh, she's taking roller skating lessons, like to learn how to like do like. Are they the four to, skates or the blade? Nah, they're the four wheelers, uh, actual roller skates. I think those yeah. are coming like back into style more. There's than the a. Blade. I mean, it's actually it's actually a really competitive uh, sport as well. Like uh, racing or like like finessing uh, more it's almost like uh figure skating oh okay okay, okay. it's like it's like a figure skating thing oh. and that, so she's taking lessons to she's being instructed by somebody who was a professional like 
figure skating mm-hmm. roller skater. I don't know if she's got the drive for all of that. We actually just found a passion for her. Right. Like, we actually found something she enjoys mm-hmm. to do. And her instructor's like, we have to start pushing her. And I'm like, just give it a minute. Let, yeah. her, let her actually let really her like it. it first. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, as somebody who grew up with a lot of hobbies and making music and so forth, I understand how hard it is to actually find a thing. Yeah. Having a drive for it is a is a separate thing. Mm-hmm. So like we, if she's eleven, if we just kind of like found a thing for her. So like I don't want to go pushing her into into something going harder than she really yeah. wants to. So it, you know we go we go as hard as she wants to go. Yeah, okay, no, I, I love that attitude because you know Indian parents have the opposite attitude. Yeah, we uh, dick <laughs> what you're gonna go hard at. And you're gonna go hard at it. I don't give a fuck if I you don't like you it. What, I tell you what, man. She, I used to help her with her homework a mm-hmm. lot. I was heavy in her homework yeah, yeah. like all throughout school. And this year she really like took it upon herself to kind of like you know like back off that yeah. like a little bit of. You know, come in. You need a little help with your math? No, you know, she come to, every now and then. She feed me a grammar question. You know what I mean? Like, help me with this. Man. You know what I mean? And then she comes back with a. She had like a ninety point two GPA this year, and I was just like, whoa, damn. Like, like oh, okay, well, fuck me then, yeah. right? <laughs> like, yeah, congratulations, but Jesus Christ, you know what I'm saying? Like, but she she's doing she's doing so good. She's doing so good. And uh, my my oldest, she, she pulled herself together. That was a that was a that was a, that was a challenge. Yeah. We had to pull her. Across the finish line this year, but we but we pulled her across, yeah. and she's going. She's going. Well, I can't imagine year. how hard school has been with all this COVID, and it's like it's not like who's who's failing kids today. Yeah, who who is what what teacher is looking at everything these kids are being dealt with mm. these days? You know, what I mean, mask on, mask off, Spike online, people. inside, going. Who is doing that? Who's failing a the kid these days? Real you know? spiteful people. Uh, That's absurd. Because a lot of teachers, uh, from what I understand, maybe in the past, it might have changed. Like, if you have, like, some type of criminal record, you can't mm. be a teacher. So hmm. um, a lot of them are just, like, uh, not fun people that have made nah. it through. Hey, how about yeah. that? <laughs> like, I taught karate as a young kid. And I would have really? loved, yeah, I would have uh. loved to be a teacher because, you yeah. know, like, uh, it's just like fun, you know, mm-hmm. like interacting. And it's like almost like comedy on a different level mm-hmm. because they actually get something out of it. But the teachers that sometimes do teach are bitter right. and they're fucking mean. I get that. And they don't I, have- I like the I like the idea of teaching. I was I was I was an education major for about two classes <laughs> and then decided I would go ahead and uh, be a criminal justice major. Yeah. Uh, it just uh, I think I, I think I want to get a law degree. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's the plan right now. OK. Um. But I, I I thought I thought about teaching. I, I think I would still like to teach. I like to talk. Right. Uh, so, you know, like, you know, I, I like to be able to, like, write a curriculum one day and maybe do some public speaking and stuff For like sure. that. For yeah. sure. Well, you already do the public speaking. I do. Yeah. I do, yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to touch on this, too, because we're uh, heading out of here soon. Um, where did your uh, love for music production come from? Because, you know, you make oh, killer man. beats. Even when you rap over the beats you kill, yeah. you sound like... Like a real hard man. And <laughs> sometimes I just want to download your shit and put it on my like, workout playlist. I, you have a great sound. I've made music since I was nine. Wow. I started rapping and singing some when I was like nine. Okay. Um, I think I'm on like a like a ten year cycle. Mm-hmm. Every ten years or so, something new comes along, right? So I made music all since I was a, since I was a kid, and I got to be around 20. Uh, when I was 19, I had a record deal. Oh. Uh, me and my boys, we got signed to Tommy Boy Records. That's what's up. And we, we were, you know, we, we put records out for a couple of years. And it was in that time frame that I got into producing mm. and actually started making beats as well. So I've been doing that for over 20 years yeah. now. Um, but it just comes from, it, it really comes from necessity, mm-hmm. right? Necessity is the mother of invention. So when you're a rapper, and all your friends rap, and everybody wants beats, but we're all working in this one circle. Yeah, we can't all get the beats, so well, I'll, I'll make my own. Yeah, right. So I bought a machine, you start making your own beats, and you start doing them yourself. These days, it's more of a, it's more therapy than anything yeah. else. Um, I do occasionally find myself on a record that comes out. You know, um, Kevin Hart show that came on Netflix mm-hmm. a few months back. Uh, True story. Okay. Um, I had a song in the soundtrack. No uh, fucking way. Yeah, the song I did with my boy Vinny Paz, uh, Peace to Vinny Paz, Army of the Pharaohs. Uh, those guys, they keep me they keep me relevant, right? So me and Paz did a record like ten years ago. Right. And they used they used the song in the show, uh, True Story Dude, with Kevin that's Hart. So cool. It was actually really it was really dope. 
it was really dope because my my main thing when it comes to music and art in general, mm-hmm. right? Because I make music, I make videos, I do comedy. Yeah, yeah. You know, you do it all, baby. I'd I'd like to be authentic. Not it's not, it's not so. My my thing is is right. I don't have anything from my father. Uh huh. Right. My father passed away when I was 17. Okay. He was a year younger than I turned this year. Mm -hmm. He was 43. Super young. Yeah. Right. But I don't have anything of his. I have pictures that like my family members hold on to. They sent me, my cousin just sent me a bunch of really dope pictures of me when I was a baby. Uh I showed them to my daughter. She's like, that's me. That's not (laughs) you. That's me. Because she looks so much like me. Yeah. Right. But I don't have anything from my father. Right. Right. So my, my thing at this point in life is that my kids will always be able to to find me, mm. right? My kids will always be able to go on Google and find one of my music videos. I love that. Or find a video of me doing my podcast mm. or doing your podcast yeah. or, you know, pull up a, on Spotify and hear a record that their dad made. Yeah. Way, and they'll always have something of mine. That's why I put stuff out. Wow. I'd, like, I'd, I'm over trying to make money off of any of the stuff. I make a very good living. Uh, go Philly crime rate. It's, I, my job is very secure. <laughs> I, I have no problem taking yeah. care of my family. Yeah. But at this point, I make my art so that I'm I'm here. Yeah, so they have something. They all, my kids will always have something yeah. of mine. Yeah. Dude, that's beautiful. Yeah. Like, one thing my dad is going to leave me is our same stinky armpit smell. That's, that's and I know that's I know it's corny as, as hell, get, but yeah. like I remember like over the pandemic, I was like working from home and you know, it must have been like a week. I just hadn't put on deodorant because I'm not seeing anybody. <laughs> right. And I'm like, damn You didn't put deodorant on today until I got here. Yeah, well I just literally got out of the shower. <laughs> 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 and I just was like, why does it smell like my dad in here? <laughs> and then I literally lifted it up and I was like Dad? Yeah. You know, I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, and I felt like so much. I felt closure. I was yeah. like, oh, I'm like when he passes, like yeah. this, I have him. Yeah, he is here. There's foreskin and this armpit. That's stuff. right. That's what my father. Gave my me. kid. My kid laughs like my dad. Yeah. It's like his laugh and his dimples skipped a generation. Wow. She. I don't know where it came from, uh-huh. but like in the last two weeks, it's like a light switch, mm-hmm. and she laughs like. <laughs> <laughs> she laughs like my dad. Oh, that's awesome. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, but that that's what mattered. That's what means the most to mm-hmm. me is that is that my kids have something of mine that, that they have me. Right. For as, for as long as they as long as they want. Yeah. yeah that's that's real. That's that's yeah. real nice. That's a that's a really great way to look at it too. Yep. And now I'm going to actually have to change my perspective on <laughs> all the content I make. Uh, yep. Cuz before it was a very ignorant like I'm just trying to make it. Let's make this money. <laughs> Let's get it. But no, you're really just leaving yeah. shit for your loved ones that's so it. they can remember you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's Hell why yeah. I, that's why I have no problem with trying something new. Mm-hmm. I have no problem with putting it out there when I try something new is because ultimately my kids will never my kids will always be able to look back and say my dad was crazy he really thought he was going to do a talk show every week yeah he didn't have time for that shit <laughs> <laughs> and it also shows like you know like if if you did have something that failed mm-hmm. you weren't afraid to have it fail absolutely and that that's another thing especially in the Indian community everything has to be perfect perfect right. perfect no one ever talks about failure you know right. what I mean and yeah. that's what this whole podcast is like look at me just fail when I'm hammered a little bit <laughs> yeah. so Lawrence check this out this is a game I like to play with all my guests okay. before they leave this is a blizzard on the wall and as someone who has diabetes and uh, a, a sweet tooth mm-hmm. I'll give you three opportunities to guess what this is you can take your sunglasses off because color is a big thing what? here but uh, yeah, so just give me a flavor and then Blizzard, and that will be your guess. A flavor? Yeah. So example, like um, Oreo Blizzard, but this is obviously not Oreo. This doing. is a, this is like a strawberry shortcake Blizzard. I'm gonna give you an ant. Not oh. there's no strawberry. I, I will give you like shortcake is kind of close. Okay. All right, like a like a birthday cake. Color wise, we're there. Uh. But. What? I'll need a. At the end, a blizzard to know it's your a final blizzard. guess. I'm going to say, yeah, it was, no, not birthday cake. Confetti cookie blizzard. Mm, that is very close. What? But eh. oh. now this is what I give. on the uh, For your last guess, my only hint is cracker. 
cracker. Yes. This is a an average white man blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> when I have like white people on here, I like to just be like cracker, cracker, cracker. It's a cracker. Like, why have you been talking about this blizzard the whole conversation? <laughs> you're really close. You what? you're you're tiptoeing around it, and with the word cracker, you should get it. That is uh that's think about it. you've had this snack. You've had it. Have I? Yeah. I mean I they come a, like I I can't give you more than I've already given oh. you. Because the other day I gave it away and I A won. cracker? Yeah. That's not a like a saltine. No, no, blizzard. definitely not a saltine. No, no. Think about it. They're they're a little frosted, you know, something blank cracker blizzard. What? <laughs> that's not <laughs> Why isn't that making any sense to me? It's blank cracker blizzard. Fire cracker blizzard? No. It was animal cracker. Animal cracker? Yeah. Frosted animal cracker. Frosted animal. The frosted is what's throwing me uh, off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, is that. Why is it upside down? Because all. Is blizzard, that a blizzard thing? Is, yeah. Is the cup it, upside down? We serve it upside down to show that it's thick. That it's super thick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And all it's right. also like kids will be like, whoa. And then you're like Dairy Queen man. I was like, why is it printed upside down? Yeah. Does he know? Does he no, know that? I know. Me, me thinking. <laughs> me, I'm so impressed with myself. Like, good job, Sherlock. Right? Does he know that that's printed upside down? Did he pay for that? Yeah, he ripped yeah. off. That's what, that's awesome. Well, Lawrence, I enjoyed you coming here, my brother. Thank you very much for yeah. having me, man. It was a good time. Yeah, right. don't break your ass when you're roller skating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be sitting. I'll be doing homework. Yeah. While she's skating, yeah. Yeah, uh, tell the Bob Nation where to follow you. Oh find man! You. All right, so I'm on Instagram at the Lawrence Arnell. I'm on Facebook at Lawrence Arnell. Uh, I'm at Northeast Detectives. If you have a complaint, uh, if you get robbed or anything, you can come. You can come see me over there. <laughs> um, I'll interview you and then throw your file in the trash. Um, <laughs> and uh, other than that, man, stay out of trouble, stay safe, and stop treating each other like assholes. That's it. Till next time, guys. Right. Peace. Peace.